Assalamu alaikum, my name is Ifat. Um, if you take a look on your seats, you'll find an index card and a pen or a pencil. Um, if you um, can write down your contact inf information, your name, address, email address, and or phone number. Also, if you um, can, please turn, turn off all your cell phones. Um, and fill in any empty seats in front of you. Thank you. Jazakallah. Thank you. In the name of Allah, the most merciful, the most beneficent. Verily, all praise is due to Allah. We praise Him, we seek His help, we ask for, for His forgiveness. We seek refuge in Allah from, from the evil of our souls and from the sin, sinful deeds. Whoever Allah guides, no one can misguide. Whoever Allah allows to stray, no one can guide. I bear witness there is none worthy of worship except Allah, and Rasulullah is the messenger of Allah and the servant of Allah. Rabbi Shahli Sadri wa Sayyidi Amri wa Ahlul Aqdada min Nisani Yafqan Qali Rabbi Zidni Amri. My dear respected brothers and elders and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I would like to welcome all of you to this historic occasion tonight. I want to thank you for all joining, thank, thank you all for joining us tonight, inshallah. Before we begin our discussion tonight, inshallah, we would like to start with a few verses of uh, rec recitation from the Quran, and Brother Limon will do it first. I'm 
المعروف وتنهون عن المنكر وتؤمنون بالله ولو آمن أهل الكتاب لكان خيرا لهم منهم المؤمنون وأكثرهم الفاسقون صدق الله العظيم Now, now I would like to read to you what I just recited. O oh, you who believe, fear Allah as he should be feared, and do not die except in a state of Islam, and hold fast all together by the rope which Allah stretches out for you, and be not divided among yourselves, and remember with gratitude God's favor on you, for you were enemies and he joined your hearts in love so that by his grace you became brethren, and you were on the brink of the pit of the fire, and he saved you from it. Thus Allah makes his sign clear to you, that you may be guided. Let there arise out of you a band of people inviting to all that is good, enjoying what is right and forbidding what is wrong. They are the ones who attain felicity. Be not like those who are divided among themselves and fall into disputation. Dis disputation after receiving clear signs for them is a dreadful penalty on the day when some faces will be lit up with white and some faces will be lit up and some faces will be in the bloom of black to so those faces who will be black will be said did you reject faith after accepting it taste them the penalty for rejecting faith but those whose face will be lit up with white they will be in the light of Allah's mercy their end to dwell forever. These are the signs of Allah. We rehearse them to you in truth, and Allah means no injustice to any of his creatures. To Allah belongs all that is in the heavens and on earth. To him do all questions go back. You are the best of people, evolved for mankind, enjoying what is right, forbidding what is wrong, and believing in Allah. If only the people of the book had faith, it were best for them. Among them are who have faith, but most of them are perverted transgressors. Jazakallah khayyim. Okay. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Salman Zaki. Now we'll be reading the Bengali translation of the recitation. Hey Mandargon, Allah ke jaman bhai kara uji, thik temni bhabe bhai korte thako. এবং অবশ্যই মুসলমান না হয়ে মৃত্যুবরণ করো না আর তোমরা সকলে আল্লাহর রজুকে সুদৃঢ় হস্তে ধারণ করো পরস্পর বিচ্ছিন্ন হয়ো না আর তোমরা যে নিয়ামত নিয়ামতের কথা স্মরণ করো যা আল্লাহ তোমাদের বুকে দান করেছেন তোমরা পরস্পর শত্রু ছিলে অতঃপর আল্লাহ তোমাদের মনে সম্প্রীতি দান করেছেন ফলে এখন তোমরা আর অনুগ্রহের কারণে পরস্পর ভাই ভাই হয়েছো তোমরা এক অগ্নিকণ্ডের পারে অবস্থান করছিল অতঃপর তা থেকে তিনি তোমাদেরকে মুক্তি দিয়েছেন এভাবেই আল্লাহ নিজের নিদর্শন সমূহ প্রকাশ করেন যাতে তোমরা হেদায়ত প্রাপ্ত হতে পারো আর তোমাদের মধ্যে এখন একটি দল থাকা উচিত যারা আহ্বান জানাবে সৎকর্মের প্রতি নির্দেশ দেবে ভালো কাজের এবং বারণ করবে অন্যায় কাজ থেকে আর তারাই হলো সফল কাম আর তাদের মতো হইও না যারা বিচ্ছিন্ন হয়ে গেছে এবং নিদর্শন সমূহ আসার পরও বিরোধিতা করতে শুরু করেছে তাদের জন্য রয়েছে ভয়ঙ্কর আচার সেদিন কোন কোনো মুখ উজ্জ্বল হবে আর কোন কোন মুখ হবে কালো বস্তুত যাদের মুখ কালো হবে তাদের বলা হবে তোমরা কি ইমান আনার পর কাফের হয়ে গিয়েছিলে এবার সে কুফরির বিনিময়ে আজাদের আশা গ্রহণ করো আর যাদের মুখ উজ্জ্বল হবে তারা থাকবে রহমতের মাঝে তাতে তারা অনন্তকাল অবস্থান করবে এগুলো হচ্ছে আল্লাহর নির্দেশ যা তোমাদেরকে যথাযথ পাঠ করে শোনানো হচ্ছে আর আল্লাহ বিশ্ব জাহানের প্রতি উৎপীর্ণ করতে চান না আর যা কিছু আসমান ও জমিনে রয়েছে সে সবই আল্লাহ এবং আল্লাহর প্রতি সবকিছু প্রত্যাবর্তনশীল তোমরাই হলে সর্বোত্তম উন্মত মানব জাতির কল্যাণের জন্য তোমাদের উদ্ভব ঘটানো হয়েছে 
তোমরা সৎ কাজের নির্দেশ দান করবে ও অন্যায় কাজে বাধা দিবে এবং আল্লাহর প্রতি ইমান আনবে আর আল্লাহর কিতাব বেরা যদি ইমান আনত তাহলে তা তাদের জন্য মঙ্গল কর তাদের মধ্যে কিছু তো রয়েছে ইমানদার আর অধিকাংশই হলো পাকাচারী
You know, everybody turn to that youth and then start yelling, SubhanAllah. Is that, do you think that youth is ever going to come back to the masjid willingly? What do you guys think? That's not the only issue. We, our masajids don't even allow our sisters to go in there. If they're on, over 12, that's it. It's over for them. Our masajids aren't, aren't providing any kind of services to our sisters. So we try to look at some of the problems in our community. I got together one of the president brothers from, uh, that I met in Masjid uh, ICPC, Islamic Center of Fasey County, for those of you who don't know. And I started discussing some of the issues that Bengalis are facing. So I, and some of the brothers from this community are very, also very concerned about the, about the youth, especially in this community. And, but because their numbers are so small, their voices aren't being heard properly. So I sat with the brothers from, the, from uh, some of the local brothers from here, and then we, we started discussing some of the issues um, that we need to fix. So we said, how can we, the, if the masajids aren't allowing us to do anything in the masjid, we have to do something for the youth. So alhamdulillah, we, uh, we said, OK, if we start something, how are we going to get to the parents? How are we going to let them know? So uh, some suggestion came up, and then we met up with some, we had, we had six youth with us at that point. So we met with them and then asked them for their opinion. So some of the brothers said, OK, let's call it a con conference, a discussion panel, and then we tell them our problems. And then from there, we collect their um, contact information. We tell them what we're trying to do. If they like it, they'll send their kids to us. Inshallah, we work together as a, as a team, as a community. So um, so the purpose of this, uh, Ifat's, Ifat's um, position was to you know, get everybody's information co and collected. And whenever we do something, inshallah, we can reach out to you and tell you about the services that and the activities that we're doing. So uh, bef before that, we also started looking at some of the um, major issues within our community. So we, I said, no youth activities. Attitude toward the youth is very bad. So, and then the youth aren't learning anything. If you ask them, if you ask them a simple question, like a 21-year-old sister was asked, who is Prophet Musa? She's like, I don't know who Prophet Musa is. Isn't that sad? Like, if you ask a five-year-old Christian boy, even an atheist, I don't know if they're going to be atheists when they're five, but even if you ask a Christian Jew, they will know who Musa is. But when it comes to our Bengali community, sisters don't know who Musa is. And it's, it's not just one sister. So we said, okay, let's look at, let's do a survey, and then uh, let's look at what are the activities that are involved in, in school and out of, outside of school. How much is how much Islamic knowledge they have? So we come up, we we came up with the with the results. Inshallah, in, uh, in a few minutes we'll show you the results, and hopefully that will open your eyes. Also, we asked some of the sisters. Um, why, why, are you, why aren't you um, doing what you're supposed to do? She's like, I was never, I was never told what, what I'm supposed to do. I was never taught Islam the way it should be taught. I was also always taught, you know, this is haram, that is haram, don't do this, don't do that. So that was, that's another problem. One of the, I want to mention another story within our Bengali community. And I know a sister that goes to, um, a college and, and within within the radius of 20 miles here. SubhanAllah, man, her mom is a, a, an alim, you can say. She teaches little kids Islam, Quran, and the Hadith and stuff. But the things she's doing in college, you guys will not believe it. I, I'm embarrassed to say the things she's doing in college. And who, if you ask her, she's going to say, my parents don't, didn't ever teach me anything. So who do we blame this for? So inshallah, we want to open up your eyes tonight, inshallah. 
we want us, we want you to go, guys to be aware of what's going on. Many parents, how many parents here ever went, been to high school or college in America? How many parents? Okay, so that explain that also explains another um, issue that we have. So you guys never been to college or school, and you don't know what's going on. You're sending your kids to school, and you're thinking that they're going to school learning and coming out of the college or high school with a complete package. Alhamdulillah, maybe they have the education, but what, what else is coming with them? You, anyone know? I don't think anyone have any clue what's going on in college, what's going on in schools, high school. Kids are being bullied every day. Kids are, you know, dating girls. Kids are being in harm relationships. But they, they can't tell you because you made the environment so hard for them. They're so shy, so, so afraid to tell you even the simple things. Maybe they're having a problem with their puberty. They want to go, they want to come talk to somebody, you know. So when we opened up the floor, you know, the first week we had six kids and we heard them out. And next week we had, we had 12 kids in the, in the room, 100% increase. And the following week, 16, we keep getting increased because we're, we're hearing them out. Not only we're hearing them out, we're coming up with the solution. So how are these problems affecting us? We're obviously in a state of emergency. We need to do something. And what I want to show you some of the data, some of the facts that we collected from the US Census Bureau. So we, we looked at Bangladeshi Muslim American versus some other Muslim Americans. So under this category, uh, employment, management, business, science, and art uh, occupation. How many do you think, how, what percentage of, of Bengalis are in this category? How many uh, do you, just yell out a number. 5%. Five, okay. Okay, inshallah, I'm gonna show you the result. So actually it's better than what you thought, but still look at the, look at the pattern. Bangladeshis are way on the, on the below. Bangladesh only 33%, Palestinians 40, 44.5%, Pakistanis. 43.7 percent Syrians, and these are the people that live around us, and this is for the entire America. And even if we do just Patterson, I think these numbers are going to go down to five, like some people said. And why am I showing you this? Kids also mentioned that you know their parents are forcing their dream upon the kids. They're going to college, but. Parents are telling them you have to become a doctor. You have to become uh, an engineer. What about their dream? Maybe they want to become a filmmaker. They, maybe they want to become an artist. Maybe they want to become a journalist. Our, our Muslims shouldn't only be doctors and engineers. We need one of the major problems with our Muslim Americans is that we don't have everybody in the Fields. Then we looked at self-employed uh, business owners. I'm just going to show you the results because uh, the timekeeper is telling me my time is up. <laughs> Only 6.6% of Bengalis are, are self business owners. They look at Turkish, Pakistani, Syrian, Palestinians. And subhanAllah, when somebody in our community, when somebody tries to do something good, we have 10 people trying to pull their legs. Isn't that true, guys? Yes. yes. I, I don't want to get into politics. This is not a political organization, but recently look at what happened to our in our community. I don't, I don't want to go any farther. Let's look at how many people, how many Bengali people are making 200, more than 200,000 and, and, and the other, other community, Muslim communities. Three out of hundred people. Three percent, only three percent is making two hundred thousand. Some people may say, okay, Rasulullah so so said this this dunya is like a prisoner to Muslim and and uh, heaven from non believer. SubhanAllah. I, I know some people are are thinking about it. 
there's nothing being, nothing wrong with being, we should be wealthy. So when there's a need in our community, when we need uh, to collect money for the masjid, somebody is going to write us $200,000 check. Somebody is going to write us a million dollar check. So we need, guys, please do not limit yourself to one, you know, if, just don't be satisfied with low numbers. Let's look at the median income, family income. So median, uh, it's, not the, it's not an average. Average is when you add everybody up and then divide by the number. But median is more accurate. So we want to look at the more accurate numbers. Bengalis are making, median Bengalis are making $47,000 across the America. Palestinian, 60, and then Syria, Syria you have 77. But honestly, honestly, in, I, in Patterson, if you look at it in Patterson, this number, I, I believe this number is in 20s. So there's obviously, we need to do something about it right now with our youths, because you guys, the parents are already, you know, at a stage that they cannot change themselves about these numbers. But the youths can have an impact on these. So we looked at the bachelor degrees that are higher. Alhamdulillah, that's the only place we got a very decent number. So Syrian, you know, Bangladesh is actually 49.6%. But again, Patterson would be much more scary. This is all of America. <laughs> How many Bengali Muslims can speak English, and uh, as opposed to the other ones? And that's one of the major problems that our youths mentioned. The the parents can't in, can't speak English, and then they're not even willing to speak English, and they said they're very parents are too cultural. So what's what's that? How is that affecting our youth? They can't communicate with you guys. They can't tell you what they're trying to tell you. Even if you think you you know everything about them, you, trust me, you don't know half the things that they're going through and that they're doing in school. So it's time for us to communicate with them, sit down with them, and talk to them, you know, hear them out. Inshallah, next, uh, Brother Danny is going to speak to you about the surveys. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Bala Sunni, and Afna That's just some of the I picked up over time. So, inshallah, in my part of the presentation, I'm going to show the statistics we compiled of the Bengali youth. So, the way this worked is we had 16 questions, and alhamdulillah, our youth and our organization distributed the surveys to their friends in high school. And we also had an online version of the survey. And alhamdulillah, we were able to get over 100 responses to the survey. So what you're about to see is very shocking because a lot of us, we consider our youth to be perfect, like they can't do anything wrong. But these results are so shocking that they can very well be affecting our own children, but we don't even know about it. So before I get started with the statistics, I just want to ask the parents in the audience a few questions. And I want you guys to deeply think about these questions as I go over the survey. So the first thing I want you guys to think about is how much of an impact peer pressure plays on your children's lives. So how big of an impact is it when they're in school, when they're with their friends, and even in the, their environment that they grew up in? So the next question I want you to think about is also how much your children really care about their religion. So are they very proud to be Muslims? And if something that they do as Muslims doesn't seem to be cool with their friends, are they ready to abandon it just so they can fit in? Also, think about your relationship with your children. Are you open with them about everything? And do you have a strong relationship with them? And finally, I want you to think about what you as a parent have done to provide the best possible, possible situation for your children. So, we all want our kids to become doctors and engineers. That, in in Hamda, we're pretty confident about their academic abilities. We know they're getting A's in school. But how confident are we about their, uh, how religious they are? How, very, how knowledgeable they are in their deen and how pious they are. <coughs> when they're tested in this world, and they will be tested, there's no doubt about that, with the many temptations that this world has to offer, will they be ready, will, will their iman be strong enough to protect them from the things that are wrong? So please think deeply about these questions and 
I know, again, you guys believe that your children have done nothing wrong, but um, I want you guys to just open your minds and open your hearts to these survey results. And if they truly impact you, then I want everyone here, inshallah, to make a commitment that they'll do everything they can to better the situation, inshallah. So, so shall us begin. So the first question we ask is, what is your relationship with the uh, members of the opposite gender? So 47% said they were just friends. Now, I know some of you guys are thinking, okay, what's the big deal if they're just friends? That's harmless, right? But it's important to know that even though they're communicating with the opposite gender on a daily basis in environments like school or work, that it's not acceptable that they're just friends. And it's, it can start out as just friends, but it can lead into something bigger. And, and that can be a very big problem. So I just want you guys to think that no two people who are currently dating started out as boyfriends and girlfriends, right? They started out as just friends and eventually became a serious relationship. And when a guy and a girl do have a conversation, it's not just them alone. Shaitan is there and he's whispering to them. And when they leave that conversation, they're going to leave with something in their hearts. And what Shaitan is trying to do is try to plant a seed so that seed will grow and it might lead into something uh, a lot more dangerous. So that's just how Shaitan works. That's what he does. And the relationship now that might seem like a harmless, just friends relationship, it can end up into two unmarried teenagers with a newborn child. Now, obviously, that's an extreme example and we obviously don't want that to happen. but. If for some people, that's exactly what happens. Um, so when you guys look at this result and see that it's 47% who are just friends, I want you to look at it as 47% who are potentially in a situation that can lead to something worse. And that's basically half the community. So of the 100 that we surveyed, 33% of the sisters said they were currently dating in a relationship. And of the 100 we surveyed, only 10% said they had no type of relationship with opposite gender. That number should be 100%. And inshallah, will be one day. Inshallah. Inshallah. Then, All right. The next uh, question we asked was, have you ever had any sexual relationships with the, while not married? And 16% of the 100 that we surveyed said they did. That's a very scary statistic. Next question is, do, do you guys ever talk about sex or the opposite gender with your friends? And 65% said they did. That's most of the community. How, have you ever smoked cigarettes, hookah, etc.? 49%, just about half the community said they have smoked at one point in their lives. Then we asked, have you ever smoked or sold drugs? 25%. One fourth, one in every four Bengali youth in Patterson said that they have either smoked or sold drugs at one point in their life. And have, has anyone ever drank alcohol? 28%. Again, that's even more than drugs. 28%, a little over one of every four Bengali youth has had an alcohol substance at one point in their life. Do you listen to rap music? So 59% of you said they listen to it, and I just want to explain to the audience what rap music is, for those who don't know. Rap music is probably the most popular form of music amongst the youth, youth today, right? And a lot of them are just attracted to it because of the beats, but they don't actually pay attention to what's being said in the songs themselves. First of all, it's filled with a lot of profanity. Almost every sentence probably has a curse word in it. And on top of that, the songs, all they do is they glorify getting money in Haram Matters, uh, getting women and getting cars. That's the lifestyle that they portray for the youth to follow. And they degrade women and make a lot of inappropriate references to them. And on top of that, there's obviously drugs and violence involved in these, uh, this kind of music. So what they're doing is they're basically sending out the wrong message. And unfortunately, as you can see, it has a major impact on our youth. And even the sisters who listen to, this, li listen to this don't even realize that what's being said about them is something that's very degrading, but they still listen to this. Because they don't take the time to actually hear out the words, they're just, again, following the beats. So, unfortunately, more than half of the youth listen to this type of music. So the next question is, do you currently or have you ever viewed pornography? 
And obviously, we would expect the uh, brothers to have viewed this more than sisters, and in the statistics actually prove that 55% of our Bengali youth, the brothers, have viewed pornography at one point in their life. And just as a side note, 31% of the sisters said they did too. And that's actually very shocking because this is something you'd expect brothers, or not, well, we don't expect our brothers to be doing this, but you'd expect men to do this more, but 31% of our sisters to be viewing this kind of stuff. That's one in every three sisters in this community. And for those who do have computers in their home, try to have them in an open area and don't place them in uh, anyone's bedrooms because that will just create a situation that can lead to viewing pornography in other inappropriate material. So the next thing is, have you ever kept a big secret from your parents? Now, I just want to ask the audience, do you guys, what, guys, what, what percentage do you think this is? 103. <laughs> <laughs> My brother said 103%. So, 82% of our youth that we surveyed in Patterson actually said that they do keep big secrets from their parents. That's scary to think that our parents who think that their children are perfect in every way, most of them are keeping secrets from you, and they're actually afraid of to share them with you. Okay, so now we're going to get into questions that relate to their level of Iman and the knowledge that they have of it. So what is the view of your religion, of Islam? So 25% of those we surveyed said that it's important to them, but it's just too hard for them to follow. One in every four of our youth know how important it is to be a Muslim, but just the situation that they're presented with, it, for them it's just too hard. How much do you feel like you know about Islam? So 32% said they know just the basics, but we had other options such as not even the basics, a little more than the basics, and a lot. And some of the surveys we had actually, the person said they know a lot, but when it came to a question about Prophet Musa Islam, they said, I don't know who Prophet Musa Islam is. <laughs> so that's actually, Prophet Musa Islam to know about him is something basic. So this result actually, probably a lot more than half don't even know the basics. Okay, so what describes your attitude towards Islamic knowledge? So 25% of the sisters said that they don't have any way of learning. SubhanAllah. And even more shocking is 69% of the total youth as brothers and sisters, they wish they had some better way of learning. So if most of our children are asking us that they want to learn more but we're not providing it for us, and that, that has to open our eyes as to what we're doing with the community. What is your attitude towards the Qur'an? 17% believe, believe in the Qur'an, but they don't agree with every single verse in it. And on top of that, 9% said they don't even understand it at all. Okay. Which of the following best describes your attitude towards Prophet Muhammad So obviously for us, the Prophet is our greatest example. But for 14% of our youth, they don't even know anything about him. And 35% don't even consider him to be our greatest example. Okay, so this is actually a pretty interesting statistic. We asked the people which of the following was not a miracle or ability of Prophet Musa So we had five results. And four of them were an actual ability of his, and one was not. So this number right here, 27%, is actually the percent of people who got this question right. So most of our youth don't know anything about Prophet Muhammad Okay, so I actually made a separate section for our sisters, and before I go into these results, I just want to let you guys know that everything you've seen up to this point is pretty shocking. But when it came to the actual results for the sisters, it was just scary. And um, I don't exactly know why these results came out the way they did, and I don't know why, for them, they don't understand religion as much. But uh, I just want you guys to know that it's important that, that our sisters are very important for us in our community. And culture might have played a role in what you're about to see, but we really need to open our eyes to the reality of the situation. Our sisters, as you saw in one of the early statistics, are being deprived of their getting any knowledge of their religion. And it's going to show in the percentages you're about to see. 
So I want everyone here to raise your hand if they believe that our sisters are important to us. If you think that our sisters are important to our community, raise your hand. So alhamdulillah, everyone here has their hand raised. But I just really want to deliver this message just so we really appreciate the contribution sisters have made to our religion. So our sisters, just so you know, are the reason why we're here practicing this now. Our sisters were, are the future mothers of the next generation. And when we're born and we're young, they're the ones who gave us the first lessons in Islam. So in, in actuality, they have the most important job in the world. The President of the United States doesn't have the most important job in the world. Our sisters have the most important jobs in the, in the world. And their, their job is so important because they raise the future scholars and leaders of our communities. And um, it's important that we give them every opportunity they can to learn about the religion so they can teach us and better our community. And just so you guys don't think that I'm coming up with all this on my own, I want to show you a few examples from our Islamic history. So Aisha radiallahu anha, who was the wife of the Prophet sallallahu she narrated to us over 2,000 hadith. Only three companions of the Prophet narrated more, more uh, hadith than her. So we owe a lot to her because she taught us how to emulate the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Prophet is our most beloved um, leader and our most beloved person in the world. And she was a true scholar of her religion and we need to appreciate that. So I want to look at another example. The first person to die because they believed in that ilaha illallah, that there's no God but Allah, it wasn't a man. It was a companion of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and her name was Sumayya radiallahu anha. The first martyr of Islam was a woman. And she, she was braver than any of us today could, could ever be. Today, we're, we don't even talk about our religion because we're afraid the FBI or the NYPD might be listening in on us. But she was tortured and she didn't give up saying that ilaha illallah. May Allah bless her with an amazing word of Jannah. Amen. And finally, I want to look at, talk about one of the greatest scholars in our history, Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah ta'ala. Of the many scholars that he learned from, four of them were actually female scholars. And he would praise these female scholars, and he was actually surprised by how much knowledge they had. So our greatest teachings from our greatest scholars had their roots in our sisters, the sister scholars of her past. And I just want to give you one more example. Ibn al-Najd, who was another prominent scholar of his time, believe it or not, he had 400 female teachers. SubhanAllah. We should want our sisters to become scholars. Okay, so now I'm going to show you uh, the results that we compiled and show. So some of the things our sisters said that they did, 19% of them said that they were involved in sexual relationship while not married. 72% of them talk about sex with, the, um, with their friends. 61% have smoked cigarettes, hookah, etc. 61%. And 39% have said that they've had a drink of alcohol substance at one point in their life. These numbers are actually greater than the brothers. And this is surprising. These are our sisters, our precious little baby girls, right? And they're actually involved in some of the things that we would expect men to be involved in. Now. But they actually have beat, beaten our brothers in these things. Just so you show you, just to show you how bad it is, I have to have two slides for this. So. 16% said that they don't even care about following their religion. 31% say it's too hard for them to follow. 9% think that the Prophet ﷺ came to tell us that everything was haram. That he wasn't a great system. He just came to say that this is haram, that's haram. You can't do anything. You can't have fun. And 59% said they don't even know who Prophet Musa is. This Prophet Musa is one of the most famous figures, as was mentioned earlier, probably in all of human history. This is stuff that little kids learn, that all of older kids learn when they go to Sunday school, or even from their parents. You have 59% of our young adult sisters in the community said they don't even know who he is. All right, so that's a lot for um, listening to me. And actually, before we get into intermission, I just wanted to say that these results we saw, especially for the sisters, are very shocking. And I just wanted to ask, like, how can we let our sisters go through this and not do anything about it? They want to learn. They said themselves they want to learn, but we're not providing them with the means to learn. 
And it's just, it's just scary to think that when our sisters go to school and they talk to their non-Muslim friends, that they're being influenced by them because they don't have that level of iman or that knowledge to, to protect them. But when they see their friends at school dressing up in a certain way because that's what the latest fashion is because this actress or that singer dressed up that way, they don't have their iman to protect them from following their example, so they just follow what their non-Muslim friends do. If they had iman, then they would show their friends what the true better way is. And the examples of sis, uh, our greatest um, Muslim sisters, like Aisha Allah, or Sumeya Allah, or even the great female scholars of our time. So, what we have to realize is that is, it, is this how we want our sisters to end up? Obviously not, right? So, we need to really start investing in educating our sisters. And if we don't do that, then we will fail without them. Because we need them to survive, for Islam to survive, we need them. And our sisters, they're the backbones of our community. And without that backbone, then we can't stand as a community. So, inshallah, we need to make efforts to educate them. Jazakallah for listening. Inshallah, right now we're going to have a short intermission. Brother Ifat will come up with a quick announcement, followed by Brother Farouk, who will share with us uh, an issue. Jazakallah. Before we start, Ifat comes up, I want to um, thank you for your patience. I know a lot of brothers are standing up in the back. So, we're going to try to bring in some chairs uh, as. Uh, as Brother Farouk gets, gets ready to uh, deliver his sheet. Um, Assalamu alaikum. For everyone who came late, please um, raise your hand if you didn't receive an um, index card um, to fill in your contact information, your name, your address, your email address, and or phone number. Also, if there's any um, seats left over, please fill in those seats and turn off your cell phones. Fill them. Inshallah, there is a car blocking uh, another car. The car is Toyota Camry LGU88A. Please remove your car immediately. You're blocking somebody. Jazakallah khair. And Brother Farouk will give us a machine. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Prashum shatu marshab digante shuni niranta. Prashum shatu marshab digante shuni niranta. Tumi Rabbul Alami Rakhu Makhlu Kher Khabo Roshan Shatu Marshab Digante Shuni Niranta Roshan Shatu Marshab Digante Shuni Niranta Tumi Rabbul Alami Rakhu Makhlu Kher Khabo Poshu Pakhi Kit Pakanga Brikha Shankhani नद नदी आर सत सागरे मझ प्राणी रंगी पशु पाखी कीट पतंग पशु पाखी कीट पतंग वृक्ष शंखी नद नदी आर सत सागरे मज प्राणी रंगी तुम का आहार तदे तुम का आहार तदे तुम का 
কাছে আহার তাদে তোমাদের নির্ভ প্রশংসা তোমার সব দিগন্তে শুনি নিরন্ত প্রশংসা তোমার সব দিগন্তে শুনি নিরন্ত তুমি রহমানুর রাহি দয়া অনন্ত সাগ তারা জলে সূর্য জলে জলে রাত্রি দি মুঠ মুঠ আলোর ফসল জড়াই ক্লান্তি তারা জলে সূর্য তোমার নামে নগমা গাহে তোমার নামে নগমা গাহে তোমার নামে নগমা গাহে ভোরে কণ্ঠ সংসা তোমার সব দিগন্তে শুনি নিরন্ত গায়ে আসমাহুল হুসনা ঝড়া ত্রিশিত অন্ত সবুজ শ্যামল খেত খামারে সবুজ শ্যামল খেত খামারে বাতাস নেচে যান্ত বিলের আকাশ পরে বলা কাহারা হঠাৎ তখন তোমার নামে হঠাৎ তখন তোমার নামে হঠাৎ তখন তোমার নামে গুঞ্জরে প্রশংসা তোমার সব দিগন্তে শুনি নিরন্ত প্রশংসা তোমার সব দিগন্তে শুনি নিরন্ত পূর্ব পশ্চিম উত্তর দক্ষিণ দক্ষিণ বা উত্তর প্রশংসা তোমার সব দিগন্তে শুনি নিরন্ত তুমি রাখ মানুর রাখি রাখ মখলুকের খাবো So now, Hamza, we are going to bring our guest speaker up on the stage. Um, Hamza, brother Imam Sharif Faisalullah, is the Imam of the Masjid of the Abrar in the Bronx. He's also a marriage counselor, so if any of you brothers are trying to get married in time soon, you should probably check the thing. Um, if this was a dinner, he would be the main course in the dessert. So Hamza, please uh, welcome our guest and our beloved brother, Imam Sharif Faisalullah. I have two rules. Uh, is English both and boost the cost of the machine. I'll try to go slow. 
Two rules, only one person talks at a time. So at any time, if you have, oh, I didn't get it, I didn't understand, raise your hand, inshallah, and I will take your question. That's the second rule. If you want to ask a question, or if you want to answer a question, please raise your hand. And on the sister side, you guys can use your index card, or I don't know, what, how, how can they ask a question, inshallah. So you guys should be able to ask a question as well. And I have a lot of chocolates over here. Uh, I call them, you know, candy questions. So if I ask you a question and you answer it, inshallah, and you, you get a candy. And this is for everyone, adults and youth, everyone, inshallah. <laughs> All right, so let's begin. So what I'm going to do is, it's not going to be a lecture. I'm going to tell you guys some stories, and I want you to tell me what you learned from them. I especially want to hear from the parents. Uh, so if there's any parents on the hallway, you guys should come. And some of the youths, you guys should give up your seats for your elders, inshallah. If you, if, you have, if you guys are strong, make sure all the parents are seated down first. You have energy, you guys standing. They should not. Okay, and I need one young brother, somebody who is fifth grade or sixth grade, to sit over there. You will be my chocolate guy. So if somebody from the back, one of the parents, gets chocolate, I can't throw it all the way back. I'll leave it to you, you'll give it to the parent, inshallah. All right? So who wants to be the chocolate guy? Okay, you want to be the chocolate guy? Okay. Uh, you want to get a chocolate gun? Sorry, right, Sean. Have a seat over there. Actually, you see right behind the camera. Let's go see the Oh, sit on this chair. Okay, give up, give up your seat right here. He's my chocolate guy. We have uh, four more chairs here in the front. Okay, so now it looks like we're ready. So I'd like to remind you of the two rules. Rule number one is what? Only one person talks at a time. Rule number two? Raise your hand if you want to ask or answer a question. Bismillah. One day, a Bedouin, people who live in desert, came into the masjid. And then he went to one side of the masjid and he started urinating the masjid. And the companions, they, they got very angry. They wanted to go and you know, stop the guy. The Prophet said, stop. Let him finish. So when he finished, he went and he asked him, why are you urinating in the masjid? He said, I thought this is a good place like any other place, so I went and urinated. So the Prophet ﷺ told him that masjid is a place for prayer, for remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for reciting Quran. This is not a place that we urinate in. Okay? So that the companions, they learned that the Prophet ﷺ told them to stop, so they stopped. So from this story, what do we learn from it? I want one of the parents to say it, please. Just raise your hand and say, inshallah. Just this little story, little hadith, what do you learn from it? Somebody has to break the ice. I need one brave parent to start, inshallah. Trust me, this is not going to be one-way lecture. You have to talk as well. Yes? You have to patient to everybody. Whatever it comes, do something wrong, tell them to do it. Make them understand. Very good. Jazakallah khair. Okay, where is my chocolate guy? Here. Can you catch it? Catch it? Give it to him, inshallah. Oh, this is going to catch it. Okay, now it's not for you. It's not for you. I will give you a minute, inshallah. So, Jazakallah khair. When someone makes a mistake, what do we do? Ah, don't stop. Don't, like, you know, we, we try to rush in, but we should be calm. Because that's some, how we actually teach. So, looking back on all of these things, you know, uh, drinking alcohol, you know, sex before marriage, uh, you know, all the things, drugs and music and all that. Now, you go home and you ask your kid, did you do any of this stuff? And the kid is like, like, you know, maybe you might have done something. What should be your reaction? You should be like the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Teach them. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, let, let him finish. Because if you stop in the middle, you might have, you know, you might have a, you know, I don't know, you're going to spray all over or something, right? <laughs> so he actually, he was calm. And then he went and he asked me, why did you do it? Because the Bedouin, he didn't know. He thought, you know, because they, they use the whole desert, they use every place for urinating, and so they didn't know. So that's the first thing, inshallah. Now I'd like to ask you guys, uh, guys a question. So, 
Let's say one day you hear a knock on your door. Knock, knock. And you go open the door. And who's there? He said, I'm Shaitan. <laughs> and you're like, what are you doing here? He said, I want to babysit your kid. What? Will you, I want to ask the parents, will you let Shaitan babysit your kid? No. no. I hope everybody said no, right? No. <laughs> so, but so I'll, now I'll tell you another story. A parent, uh, a dad, was watching a satellite dish channel. You know, one of those Arab channels that have you know, a lot of them singers. And the girl was about 15 or 16, a teenage girl. And when a very you know, handsome, famous singer came on the screen, the girl went up to the TV and kissed the screen. And the dad is, what are you doing? Get out of here. Like, you know, he was pulling her and, what are you doing? Stop. Now, what do you think? I want another parent to say your reflection. What do you think of that? It's not, it's, it's not a hard question. I'm telling you. Inshallah, tonight is a night where we will be frank and we will be honest. We're not going to be politically correct. I'm not going to hide anything from you guys. Inshallah, we'll share. So, what do you get from that? The, the two things I mentioned. I need another brave parent, inshallah. We have Jazakallah Khair for being the pioneer. Uh, yes? What about TV and TV is a Shaitan? Are you a parent? No. Inshallah, who's your parent? <laughs> so you, <laughs> so who, who bought the TV? The, the daughter or the, the dad? Dad. And what kind of channels did dad allow to watch? The same channels that he, you know, so when we bring in the TV into, into the home and they watch bad things and they learn bad things from them, who's responsible? Yeah. We have to think about it. This is something we have to think about. It. So the lesson is this. Don't let shaitan babysit your children. Okay, I know it sounds funny, but this is exactly what happens. Like when, you know, the little kid, they watch, you know, uh, even the little kid, they, they start watching Simpsons and they will start watching uh, all these things like, Wait a second, have you guys actually watched Simpsons and some of the other shows? Unbelievable, subhanAllah. The first time I watched it, like, it's not, it's not possible for a little kid to watch and then not do anything about it. Because it's so much fun and they learn so much. And then if you're watching Harry Potter, if you're watching now, you have the, all these, you know, uh, the moonlight, you know, the, the vampire diaries and all these things. They, they watch all these things. What are they going to do? So the statistic that you saw is because of what they actually grew up with. Even inside the house. You may not be in the house, but they're still learning. So, inshallah, um, can you catch? Uh, let me see. Ready? Uh, uh, nice job. My, my, my throw was a little bit far off, but you might. Uh, do you play, uh, what sports do you play? Cricket. Okay, that shows. Now, there was a boy, um, a young man actually, he came to the Prophet and he asked permission from the Prophet to commit zina. He asked the Prophet you know, so can, I, can I go and commit zina? The Prophet did he know that zina was haram? Yes, he knew. The Prophet did he know that zina was haram? Yes. Imagine this guy goes up to an imam or some of the parents and says, can I go and have sex before marriage? What would be the answer? No. 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 Yeah, but hold on. Look what the Prophet said. The, the, the people around him, that's like, they're like, shh, shh, like, you know, what are you doing? You know, don't, don't ask that kind of dumb question. You know, what did the Prophet say? So the first thing he says is that, would you like it for your mother? Like, would you like it if your mother were to commit zina with someone? And the guy said, no. Mm -hmm. Well, same thing with other people. He asked again, would you like it for your daughter? If you had a daughter, and the daughter is committing zina with somebody, would you like it? The man said, no. The Prophet said, so are other people. He asked again, would you like it for your sister? If you have a sister and she commits zina, would you like it? He says, no. The Prophet ﷺ said, so are the other people. And then he said again, it's not done yet. He said, would you like it for your aunt, your mother's sister? Would you like it for your aunt? The man said, no, no way. The Prophet ﷺ said, the same thing for other people. And then the Prophet ﷺ put his hand on his chest and he made dua for him. He said, oh Allah, forgive his sins, purify his purify his heart and make him chaste. You know, somebody who preserves himself, saves himself until they get married. What do we learn from this? Yes, do we have the hand raised? Uh, yes. Yes. Uh, you learned that um, if you did do bad things, you can be forgiven if you are sincere. 
the God, he did not actually do bad thing yet. He did, st he did not do the bad thing yet. But the way if somebody were to come and, and they say, you know, I, I, have, I have a pack of smoke, you know, can, I, can I smoke? Or they say, you know what, there's a bottle, one of my friends is inviting me over and they have alcohol, you know, can I drink? If your children ask you that question, what would be our regular responses? No way, you're grounded. That's it, you're not going out anymore. Like we will actually punish them for something. What did the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam do? He didn't say no, he didn't say haram right away. He used logic to explain to them why it's bad. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. So for the parents, this is something very important. Because trust me, I, I came into this country when I was um, 17. I finished 10th grade in Bangladesh. And then I came here, and I went to high school. I started from 10th grade again. What I learned about Islam in Bangladesh was just like do this and do that. Don't do that, that's it. Over here, I had to question everything. Why am I praying? Why am I a Muslim? Why am I wearing kufi? Why am I? Everything was like, everything was a question. And this is something in school and college, this is something they teach you. They do not let you blind follow anything. They actually teach you, ask questions for everything. Okay, so we have to be uh, very careful. Uh, okay, chocolate for you. All right, so I want actually the parents to answer. So far, only one parent and, and one youth and one young sister, mashallah, answered. So let's, the, I want to see more parents raising their hand, inshallah. All right, next story. You guys ready? Why am I mentioning all these stories? Give them two chocolates. Two chocolates? Yeah. <laughs> Why? They'll answer. Oh, they'll answer? Okay, inshallah. <laughs> the, chocolate, the, the number increased. It doubled. Two chocolates, inshallah, if you answer. Yes. Uh, I think it would be better for the parents to you know, answer your question in Bengali because a lot of parents don't know English. Absolutely, no problem. Okay, so you, maybe maybe you're understanding what I'm saying, but you can't. You you want to say it in Bangla, no problem. I'll I'll translate it in English. No problem. So I'm using Bangla to talk to the time. Can I show you that? Take that. Is there anyone besides you? Is there anyone here who does not understand Bengali? <laughs> oh, okay. Is there anyone here who does not understand Silati here? Only one guy. <laughs> All right. Now, tell you guys a story, inshallah, we're going to talk about music a little bit. There was a man, a righteous man, one day he was passing by a house. And as he was passing by, he heard a beautiful voice, a lady singing from the side. So he slowed down. He was, he was you know, going fast, he slowed down. And he, he, he was listening. And a man came out of the house, said, you know, would you like to come in? Said, no, 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 I'll just, you know, I'll just listen. He said, no, 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 please come in, please come in. He insisted. So the man came in. The man went inside. And, and the man was in the guest room, and in the other room, the lady was singing. In between them, there was a partition. So after a while, you know, the, the woman, when she knew that there was a guest listening in, she made it even more beautiful. So the man from the house said, you know, is it okay? Like, you know, do you want me to remove the, uh, the partition? So in a way that the man could see the, the lady singing, but the lady can't see the man. So no problem. And after a while, no, you know, you want to see, like, you know, they, they just take care of this, maybe you're not listening properly. So they removed the whole of the partition. And a little bit later, the man said, um, can I come back again? He said, yeah, sure. So the man came back again the second day and the third day. And the man, you know, actually started liking it. So one day, now, when the man actually goes inside the house to listen to the lady sing, there is no partition anymore. They can actually see each other. So now they started talking and they, they started to learn, know a little bit about each other. And suddenly one day the lady said, Wallahi, I love you, to the man. And the man said, I love you too. And then another day, the, the, the man of the house wasn't, wasn't there. It was just the lady and the man. And the lady invited the man to commit zina, you know, to have a um, sexual relationship. And the man wasn't obviously married to her. And the man agreed. But then, as the man was, he was about to do it, he, he started shaking. Like his whole body was shaking. And, and, and the woman is like, why are you shaking? Why are you shaking? And the man was so nervous, he said, what if, as I'm, as I'm doing this, I die? What if angel of death comes to me and takes out my soul as I'm doing it? And, and he was scared. He said, I, I don't want to meet Allah while I'm, I'm doing that sin. So that he, he stopped, he paused, and he, and he ran away. And he never came back. So uh, one of the scholars, one of the companions, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, he was one of the companions of the Prophet He said, "Al-Zina, zina He said, "Singing that you know those alluring singing with female boys that is you know uh, you know very sexual. It, it, it's a facilitator for zina. 
meaning singing, you know, bad singing is a facilitator to zina. So when we actually listen to um, the rap songs, inshallah, we're going to get to that very soon. Now I want to ask you guys a question, or two, two candies, right? What is the greatest disease in the world today without a cure? What is the greatest disease in the world today without a cure? Yes. Very good. HIV and AIDS. Here you go. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm missing it again. Okay. So HIV and AIDS. Now, who could tell me one or two main reasons for HIV to be spreading all over? Yes. Yes, in the back. Open sex. Huh? Open sex. Open sex. What's the other one? Okay, now let's say open sex, right? You know, open sex. But what leads to have open sex? Like, what kind of environment leads to it? What kind of other haram things goes on there? True. But let's say, like, you know, let's say in a club or in a nightclub, what other things go on there? Mixing with transgenders. Very good. Mixing between genders. What else? Music. Music. What else? Drinks. Drinks, alcohol, and what else? Somebody said drugs. Dancing. <laughs> so, now look at this thing. The greatest disease in the world that Allah is punishing us with. Look at the causes of it. The first cause is zina. And what causes zina? Drinking. And mixing between genders. And then this singing and the drugs. Does it make sense? That's just the first example. Now, Whenever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says something is forbidden, something is bad for you, there is a reason for that. So our parents, as parents, we need to know why something is bad. So when our kid asks us a question, we, don't, we just don't tell them it's haram. We tell them why it's haram and why it's bad for them. So now let's see. What happens when we don't listen to Allah? Let's say the first question. Intoxication, alcohol, right? What is the greatest source of accidents, car accidents and violence? And you know, actually, so a lot of the husbands they beat their wives, and a lot of you know the same thing. You know, the physical abuse, domestic abuse in the houses. What is the reason? Alcohol. 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 They're drunk, and, and you know they're drunk. That's number one. Secondly, sexually transmitted diseases. What's the reason? We already talked about it. Zina, right? Third, greatest source of stress today in the world is debt, money. Right? A lot of people, they're stressed out. Families are broken, houses are lost. What is the reason for that? Who can tell me? Yes? Gambling? Gambling is, is part of it, but not everybody gambles. A lot of people... Education? No. Nope. Something that Allah made harm. Interest. Riba. Interest. Do you guys get that? Yeah. So look at the, the, the biggest things that we're facing. All the accidents, all the biggest disasters in the world. Is because we are not following something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said not to do. Is that clear? Yeah. Alright. Now, how many of you know Whitney Houston? Uh, you, guys, you guys know, right? When did she die? Uh, she died this year. This year. She died this year about in, in, in February, right? Yeah. So, they found Benadryl, Xanax, marijuana, and Fexil in her system. She died, died of, you know, overdose from drugs. How many people look at her and listen to her song and, and like and admire her? But look at how she died. If you look at, how many of you know Eminem? Do you know two of the albums that Eminem made? One of them is called Relapse. One of them is called Recovery. You know what Relapse is? For people who, who, who get drunk and they get into drug and then they go to rehabilitation center to get fixed and they come back and they do it again. So you know, they, they, they relapse. So, the, the names of the albums are related to their problems. How many people, listen, I, did you guys see all the youngsters raise their hand when I said Eminem? Yes. They, these are like famous, you know, and, and in terms of what they actually said, we'll mention that very soon. Some of the thing, the one of the biggest thing they do, they curse everything. They curse God, they curse Allah, they curse parents, they, they curse time, they curse themselves, they curse their mothers, <laughs> they curse everything. <laughs> and I'm not joking, you guys know what I'm talking about, right? They curse everything. SubhanAllah. And these, these people outwardly, you may think, oh my God, look, look how, how handsome he looks, how beautiful she looks. Look at that mansion. Look at the car they're driving. But you know the reality? They are the most miserable people in the world. Yeah. They die early. And how they die? A lot of them commit suicide. A lot of them, commit, a lot of them die because of drug overdose. They are diseased. 
Like I'm talking about sexually transmitted disease. They live with sadness and despair all the time. They get divorced faster than they get married. <laughs> and they're all disgusted. So these people that we look up to, you know, a lot of the girls, they have these posters of these singers on their bedroom, on their, on their phone, on their computer, you know, as, well, as wallpapers. So we look up to people who are completely, completely disastrous in their life. So what do we need to do? As parents, we need to give them alternative. All right? One of the uh, uh, guy, he, his name is Napoleon. You guys know Napoleon? Yeah. yeah. From a group called Outlaws. He was actually, a, a, you know, in a, from a group with Tupac Shakur. And he became a Muslim. Napoleon became a Muslim. And, and people ask him, so what happened? What about hip hop? What's the reality? I mean, he, I'm actually from the Bronx and, you know, he, he was telling that this hip hop, this thing started from the Bronx. And he was saying, they talk about how many people they have killed, how many women they have sex with, how many people they're going to murder. Like, they actually talk about all that. Now, imagine this, a kid with the, you know, those headphones, right? And listening and walk, listening to this, you know, five hours, ten hours a day. What kind of thoughts are they going to have? Are they going to respect their parents? No. no. Are they going to respect women? No. SubhanAllah. No. So this is, this is what they are growing up with. This is what they are growing up with. And, and they actually call you to do things that, subhanAllah, you would be shocked as to what they do. So what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say? Allah says, Ya ayyuha alladheena amanu la tattabi'u khutwati shaytan. Oh, you who believe. Is there anyone here who is not Muslim? We are all Muslims. Either we pray, fast, practice, we consider ourselves Muslim. Allah is talking to us. Allah is saying, do not follow the footsteps of shaitan. And these hip hop, the, all these music, without a doubt, they are footsteps of shaitan. Whoever follows the footsteps of shaitan, they are going to be commanded to do what? Fahsha, commit indecency, talking about zina, al munka you know, talking about all the sins and evil deeds that they will be doing. This is what they're being called to. So we need to know what are the traps of shaitan. And trust me, hip hop, this, this type of music is one of them. And it's not just the only one. Like a lot of, a lot of, a lot of you have, you know, Bengali TV channels at home, right? And you know, you, you listen to the, 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 the woman beautifully singing and you know, with the wave and everything. <laughs> and and what, kind of, what kind of message is she saying? You know, like she's in love with that guy, you know, and that broke up, now it's sad and like it's dead thing. Like, what, seriously, so we, even the parent, when you listen to it day and day and day, what happens to you? SubhanAllah, this is something that we should think about. I'll tell you uh, one thing that uh, Napoleon said, uh, it, was, it, was, it was incredible. He said, when, you know, before Islam, when he was writing a song, you know what they would to do? They, he said that I would write something and then I would ask myself, if somebody listens to this song, would they say that Shaitan himself wrote it? If they think that Shaitan himself wrote it, then he's like, yes, it's a good song. Think about it. Like, that's the kind of level they, they want to go to. They want to write things that other people would think Shaitan, devil himself wrote it. That's, 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 that's actually their aspiration. How many, of you, how many of you knew that? Seriously. And you think, you think that this is their freedom, like they, they can actually, no. They are being controlled by the music industry. They have these contracts of millions of dollars. They have to produce certain level, certain albums by certain date, and they have to use all these things, you know, serious you know, beats and, and all this profanity, all these curse words. They have to include that. Do you think they're gonna teach your kids nursery songs and rhymes? No. So we have to be, very careful. One of the brothers, subhanAllah, you know what he said about music? He said music is audio pornography. Does he you know about pornography? Like when we think about pornography, it's like something visual. He said music is audio pornography for your ears. And the, those people, and you know, sometimes when we were doing a Tajweed class, like people who are learning how to recite the Quran, which when they listen to like boom boom all the day, you know, <laughs> what happens? And, and you, you say oh, or ha, oh, or like one of those letters, they, they don't know the difference. Because the, their drum is it's, it's still, it's still vibrating, they can't, they can't hear the Qur'an, they can't really appreciate the Qur'an. And you know there are people when you, like, you get into a car and, and they're, they're playing the Qur'an, and somebody's like, you know, eh, I know, let's just be quiet, I just want to you know. They get annoyed when the Qur'an is being recited. You know what that, that is a sign of? He's addicted to music so much that he's getting annoyed by the word of Allah. So this is something very serious. Now, 
How many of you had a song that stuck in your head? Oh, you just can't, you, can, you can't get it out of your head, right? Every time, and then you just, maybe you go to the store, like, you know, Walgreens or somewhere, and then they, they sing, you know, Ella, Ella, and then, like, you, you, the whole time, you're like, you know, <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah. So, it, you can't get it out of your head. Imagine what would happen when it's time for you to die. What would be going through your head? There was a, there was a doctor um, in one of the Muslim countries. He said, in his life, he said, there are 36 people, 36 patients who died in front of me. 36 patients, Muslim patients who died. And every time when, when he knew there's nothing else he could do, he would tell them, say la ilaha illallah. Why? Because the Prophet ﷺ said, whoever's last word in this world is la ilaha illallah will enter Jannah. He said, say la ilaha illallah. And he said, out of 36 people, how many people do you think said la ilaha illallah? Yeah, one. One. Out of 36 people, only one person said la ilaha illallah. And we're talking about Muslims. So if you think listening to music all day, yeah, it's fine. You know, I can say la ilaha illallah. Ask me, I'm going to say it ten times, la ilaha illallah. But we're not talking about that. Who says la ilaha illallah while they're dying? When you live by la ilaha illallah, it will come with your tongue automatically. Otherwise, it's not going to come. It's not something that you just memorize. So <clears throat> there was a young boy who was downloading, um, I think he was using Napster or one of those, you know, old days, like those uh, song downloading uh, software. So he was downloading the songs and he was looking at the names of the songs and how much time each song has. And, and he realized all of a sudden, wait a second. Every single second that I will be listening to that song, I will be disobeying Allah. And you know, he had like gigahertz, like he, he's like, not like gigabytes of you know, song, like the computer was full with songs. He was crazy about songs. So what he did is, he went to the hard drive and he right clicked, delete, and he went to the trash bin again and he deleted it permanently from his computer. He said, that's it. No more. I don't want to be disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala anymore. And he made that decision. Do you think it was easy? Seriously, think about it. Those of you who, I, for 5, 10, 15 years, you collect all these things, and then one day you have to let it go. It is not an easy decision. So those of you, if, if you see if your sons, children, they are addicted to this, you know, so inshallah, help them and encourage them to take, uh, take it one step at a time. Yes? Oh, what about Islamic song? Very good. What about Islamic songs? Like the song of Faruq, a song, mashallah. Beautiful. If the song has a good positive message, then it's good. So if Islamic nasheed, you know, the children are singing, the, 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 the men are singing, there's nothing wrong with that. But if a woman is singing, and even there's no music, and a woman is talking about heartbreak and, and all that stuff, that's something that you should avoid because it's about also about the message. So music is something that, you know, because do you know that some of the, uh, one of the guy, um, I think in Britain, he was 18 year old, he went to a nightclub and the, the music was so loud, he had a heart attack and he died because his heart was, was kind of weak. You know, uh, th those of you saw like some of the people, they, they drive their car and, and they saw the red light, what happens? The whole ground shakes, like boom, boom, like everything shakes. <laughs> Imagine that you're inside the car, you're listening to that, what's going to happen to your heart? Like you, you physically, you get affected. Emotionally, of course. So it has it has a serious effect. So you should you should take a first step, inshallah. And there are groups like Nadi Deen. <coughs> How many of you know Nadi Deen? Yeah. How many of you know uh, Dawood Wernjbi Ali? How many of you know uh, Zain Bika? They are. Uh, How many of you know Mahir Zain? Okay, a few more people know. You know, I'm not saying they're all completely okay, but just take the transition towards that, inshallah. So slowly you can get rid of the other bad stuff from your life. Wow. All right, any question, any thoughts so far? Any reflection? Seriously? All right. Do um, you guys want to hear a joke? All right. Well, I'm going to ask you guys this. What do you call someone who speaks um, like two languages? Bilingual, right? Bilingual, like two languages, right? What do you call someone who speaks three languages? Trilingual, right? three. What do you call someone who speaks more than three languages? Like multilingual, like in some way. What do you call someone who speaks only one language? An American. Otherwise, I've seen in college, like most Americans, they just don't know English, that's it. You tell them you're Spanish. They don't know any other language, most of them, obviously. So it actually is a very good thing. Being bilingual is an amazing thing. It actually develops your brain development. It's much better. So if you want your kids to just learn only English, teach them Bengali is no problem. They know Bengali and English is better for them. 
There's nothing wrong with that, inshallah. All right. How many of you have seen a masjid with a ping pong table? Oh, where? Tell me where. Jalalabad Masjid has a ping pong table? Man, mashallah. So this Eid, uh, actually the previous Eid, we decided that in our masjid we're going to get a ping pong table. So we got two, one for the brother's side, one for the sister's side. And do you know what happened? Even the adults, like everybody wanted to play. We have a little tiny masjid, right? On the one side we play, and then when it's time for, we actually fold it up, you know, put it on the side. And, and they loved it. So all this time they might be on Facebook, they might be listening to music, they might be, they don't know what to do. They can actually come and they do something fun. And you know what I love about it? Ping pong, it's, 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 a, it's a great exercise. It, it actually, like, you know, when you run around, it gives you great exercise. So next time, those of you who know how to play, play ping pong, inshallah, if I see you, my challenge is to see if you can beat me, inshallah. <laughs> <laughs> Alright? Ten chocolates, promise. Okay. Inshallah, alright. I have one challenger already. So, this, this is how the message should be. Like the brother was saying, like, when, you know, in, in subhanAllah, in my masjid, I made sure. So now it's gone. Like before when I came, I came there about a year and a half ago. And it, they would not let the kids, even him, like, he's eight, above the age of puberty, right? Okay, even if you take that, they would not let him, let him, you know, pray on the first row. I remember when I was a little kid, like, maybe even, maybe like him, you know, maybe a little bit younger. I, I remember, I still remember, I was, I was holding my dad's hand, and he's in the village, you know, where I, you know, in the village, and he would take me outside. They, they have this, uh, you know, uh, cemented area, like high ground, like it's outside. And we would go and pray. I still remember to this day the feeling I remember holding my dad's hand. And I would be excited when it's time for prayer. And make will do, hold my dad's hand and go up and pray. I, I would be excited about that. And Alhamdulillah, we have a few brothers in our mission. They bring, you know, their little kids every, almost every prayer, whenever they have the chance. Because they're just, you know, waiting and doing, watching cartoon or, or they don't know what, what they're doing in the house. If you bring them to the mission, they will learn to love the mission slowly, inshallah. And I tell them before prayer sometimes, I remind them, if I see new children, I remind them that during prayer you should not laugh, you should not talk because some of them, they don't know. And mashallah, once you actually treat them nicely, they want to come. And then they, they make the line straight and they're excited. As soon as you call the karma, they actually get ready. There was a one, a one boy, he was, um, he's, he was in kindergarten actually. You know, five-year-old, kindergarten, look what happened. He came into the mission, we were praying, and I, I already went to Ruku for the first raka, and he started crying. And, you know, and after the prayer, he, he's like, he's still, you know, three years coming up, and he was still waiting, he's crying. I said, what happened? He said, I missed the first prayer, you didn't wait for me. Five-year-old kid. SubhanAllah. And he recites Quran better than a lot of adults that I've seen. It's because of his parents. So when you let your children love Islam, love the Quran, love the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, love Allah, and love the Masjid, trust me, you'll be proud of these children, inshaAllah, one day. So, and Masjid is that place. So those of you who are, if you are an Imam or in the board of any Masjid, slowly, inshaAllah, make sure that the Masjid is youth-friendly. The Masjid is sister-friendly. Masjid is kid-friendly. Yes, trust me, they, they will cause troubles, but you have to set those rules. I actually have a, a you know, list of things like do's and don'ts. So in the don'ts, it has the little things that they cannot do. You remind them, inshallah, and they learn very easily. But they love the masjid. And that should be something, that place, that like a hangout place for them, inshallah. Okay. There was a companion who came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and he was telling the story, and he was bleeding, right? He, was the process. he said, O Messenger of Allah, I was walking in the market, and, and as I was walking, there passed by me a beautiful woman. So I looked at her. And, and I kept on looking. And when I turned, I didn't see, and I, I hit a pole. And I, you know, my nose and my is bleeding. And I, I, and I realized, what have I done? I said, you know what? I'm going to tell the Prophet He didn't even wipe his blood. He said, I'm going to go to the Prophet and I'm going to tell him what happened. Because he, he said, like, what am I going to do? The Prophet he kept silent. <coughs> Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed. And then he said to him, Tell the believing men to lower their gaze. What is gaze? And what you look with your eyes, right? Your eyesight. Lower their gaze because and, and protect their private parts. And that is pure for them. It's, it's pure, it's something better. And then, 
قل للمؤمنات يغضبن من أبصارهن ويحفظن فروجهن and tell the believing woman to lower their gaze and protect their private parts. Does that make sense? That's it. And I'm telling you, I've been through high school here, and I know the pain these kids feel. And I know even some of you, just because you, you grew up in Bangladesh or somewhere else, it doesn't matter. You, you, you went to that age. If you were in an environment where every day, seriously, I'll be frank with you, it's, it's one phone call away, it's one click away. And you sit next to girls. Girls, they sit next to boys. Like, in, you know, a girl wearing hijab. You know, in, in ninth grade. You have a boy in front of him, a boy on the right, a boy on the left, a boy on the back. And you have an assignment, a group in there, the two boys in the group. What is, what is she going to do? So the people who are actually sisters who are wearing hijab, subhanAllah, they are one of the bravest people in the world. And brothers are growing up and they start keeping their beard. Amazing job. Do you know how much courage, how much gut it takes to actually do that? Well, everybody's like, you know, they're shaving, they're, they're wearing weird pants, like, you know, you can see their back <laughs> on the walk, and, and you're actually covering yourself properly. It is not easy. It is not easy. And we should make them feel proud of what they're doing, inshallah. Does it make sense? Alhamdulillah. Now, question. Is it wrong to have desires? No. 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 Then what is wrong about it? Very good. You need to channel that desire. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, Ibn Masood radiallahu anhu was telling that that we were talking, you know, a group of single men. And you know what do single men talk about when they get together? They talk about women, right? So they were talking, the companions. They were talking about women, and the, and the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he came in and he saw their faces. He he knew what they're talking about. He knew, right? So he he told them that. You know, all young people, if any of you have the means, like, you know, you're financially ready, you're socially ready, you're mature enough, then you should get married. And if you don't have the ability, then you should fast. So it will be a shield for him. And I know, subhanAllah, I, am, I'm, I have been dealing with marriage for the last couple of years, and I'll tell you this. A lot of our parents, we think that the kid is not ready until he's 30 or until he has a PhD. Yeah. Is that true? Is that true? Yeah. Yeah. Now, do you know, I'll tell you a secret about being ready for marriage. It is not about age. It is about maturity. I have seen young brothers got married at the age of 18. He is more mature than a 30-year-old kid. And, and, and he's, he actually has a job. He, he's taking care of his family. He's responsible. And you have the 30-year-old kid playing video games. Like, they don't, don't, don't have the responsibility. So this is one thing for the parents and the youngsters. Age is not the primary factor when it comes to getting ready for marriage. It's your maturity. Number one, you have to be financially mature. Doesn't mean you have to have a job that pays you $100,000. No, meaning you get there. At least you have a part-time job. You know how to take care of money properly. Number two, you are socially mature. Like you respect your elders, you respect your mother, your sister, things like that. Like if you just, whatever you see them, you know, you're like, hey dude, what's up? And then you always, you always like that. And the, some, the parents of the girl, they see you, do you ever think that the parent would say yes to you? No way. So you need to, even if you're hip and you're all cool with, with, you know, within you, but when you are interacting with the adults, you need to show that level of respect so you know how to treat them properly. Okay? And then thirdly what? Education. Intellect. So, you know, not every, every father would agree to give, you know, uh, his daughter to someone who didn't even graduate high school. Okay, so some, some of us you know, think, think that, oh, you know, I'm, I'm all pious and I'm practicing Islam, I should get married. And the guy doesn't, can't even speak English properly, can't even buy, like, so you need to make sure that you are mature. And fourth, you should be a good Muslim as well. Because if you are, trust me, inshallah, if you save yourself, the person that you will marry, guys, she will be the queen of your heart, inshallah. And for the sisters, if you save yourself until you get married, he, your future husband, will be the king of your heart, inshallah. Otherwise, how many, what was the percentage? They had, you know, uh, friends and relationship and all that. They are all heartbroken. What's going to happen when they get married? Do you think they will actually find peace? Inshallah, maybe one day we, we make God that they come back to Islam, inshallah, they become better. But it's already broken. They, it's, it, it's, it's already done. It's going to take a lot of, you know, crazy glue to actually, you know, put that heart together. 
And it is not always easy. So we, we have to do our very best, inshallah. And that is why, when I heard these brothers, they were doing, ah, subhanAllah, this is incredible. So next time they call it a youth event, or, or they're going bowling, or they're doing something good, fun. It could be a sports, or it could be a lecture, whatever it is. And these brothers are planning, and they let you know, what should you do? No, no, my, my, my kid, he can't go. Well, you, you make your kid, you take your kids to piano lessons, you take your kids, I'm seriously, I've had, I've had parents that are like, no, I can't, I can't go to the weekend school because she has piano lessons. Mela. What is it? They take them to Mela. Mela, yes, another one. Like you, so you need to know that what they are doing, even if it's once a week, this is the most important one hour, 90 minutes of their entire week. Would you guys agree with that? Yes. Okay, how many of you agree? Raise your hand if you agree with me on this. That the program, what they do, it is the most important hour for their entire week. If you agree with that, not only your own kids, you should tell your friends and your neighbors, inshallah, to send them the email. And trust me, I mean, I, I grew up here, I used to be in Brooklyn, now I'm in the Bronx. And I tell you, one of the, the like 90% like credit goes to the people that I was with. If I didn't have good friends, if I didn't have people who prayed, trust me, I, I, it, 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 was, it would not be easy. Of course, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for guidance as well. And one of the, uh, one of the, uh, you know, Suhaib, what, mashallah, an amazing teacher. You know what he said? He said something I really love. He said, parents, we should teach our kids how to be great lovers. You know, it's not the way you're thinking. He said, <laughs> he said, they should see how their dad treats their mom with love and respect and compassion and mercy and affection. How the, dra the, the dad would tell, you know, would, would call, you know, honey, sweetie, whatever name. And then, and then the kids would actually see, little kids, they would see how the dad is talking to the, to the, to the mother. What's going to happen? When that kid grows up, when that kid gets married, he will also treat his wife well. Do you guys agree with that? Yes. But what do we do? I'll tell you a funny <laughs> story. Like, uh, a, a man came to, to, you know, to find the... Uh, the dad in the house. So he knocked on the door and the boy opened up the door. He was like, what are you looking for? So he's your dad home. And so the boy like, you know, wait a second. So the boy went to the bedroom. The dad was there. He said, so and so is looking for you. What should I say? And the dad says, go and tell him that I'm not home. <laughs> so, so the boy goes up to the door. And he's like, my dad told, told me to tell you that he's not home. <laughs> Seriously. And subhanAllah. Some, we don't, they actually, they observe us, they watch us, they're going to copy us later. So we should be the coolest husband. <coughs> Those of us who are, who are married, we should be the coolest wife, inshallah. It's not just for us, it's for our kids as well. They actually get to see us, and inshallah, they will be able to treat their spouse with love and respect. So, <clears throat> you know, sometimes we think about making mistakes, and, and you say, alright, so many of you here, the statistic that you saw about you know sex and drug and music and alcohol, you're like, you may fall in that category of people who have done it. But I have good news for you. The Prophet said, Kulli ibn Adam Every single son and daughter of Adam makes mistakes. It's a given. But, Wa khayr al He said, the best amongst them, do you know who they are? Who go back to Allah. So no matter how huge your sin is, no matter how deep in the hole you are, you can today decide, say that's it. I am going to start a new chapter in my life, inshallah. If you are the parent, you know that's it, inshallah. From today, I will create that environment in the house. My kids will love Islam. My kids will love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you can make that decision. The past, let it be in the past. Let us start a new future, inshallah. How many of you agree with that? And we can all do that. Just because your parents, your kids like pray sometimes and like, don't think that your job is done. I'll teach you, if I had an arrow, like, if I had an arrow, right? And I shoot this arrow this way. And, and if I shoot it exactly straight, and I don't put it too much force, by the time it gets there, where is it going to end up? It's going to go down, right? It's going to go down to the ground. But if I have a little more strength, it's going to at least go to the destination a little bit more. What if I put the arrow upward, and I really pull it back, and let it go, there is a good chance I'm going to actually go up and hit the target. This is how you should plan for your kids. So for the parents, listen up. If you want your kids to be a good Muslim, I have bad news for you. Your kids will end up being a terrible Muslim. 
If you want your kids to be a social Muslim, they might not even stay Muslim after a while. If you want your kids to be accident Muslim, there's a chance they might end up a good Muslim. But if you want your kids to be outstanding, amazing Muslim, inshallah they'll end up an excellent Muslim. So what do you see? Whatever goal you set for your kids, trust me, it's not going to be there. He's going to go one level, even two level low. So if you think going to, to the masjid for Sunday and learning Alib Ba'ta and like, you know, saying a few dua, that's enough for him as a Muslim to in, in this country, you are dreaming. I mean, I'm being honest with you, you are dreaming. What they learn for the rest of these six days, ten hours a day, what they learn, you think you can just teach them that one hour of Islam, and it's not even properly just you know, reading, reading the Quran without even understanding. It is not enough. It is not enough. Inshallah. So, one of the, uh, the scholars of Islam, he, uh, uh, he was asking a student, he said, if, um, if shaitan comes to you and you know, tries to make you do some bad stuff and whispers into you, what are you going to say? What are you going to do? The, the student is like, I'm going to fight him. I'm going to fight him. But he said, what if he comes back again? He said, I'm going to fight him, fight him again. Yeah, but it's a long process. He said, okay, let me tell you this. If you are going on a road and you see a lot of sheep on the road, and the sheep, they're, they're blocking, you know, let's say in a village, right? They're blocking the road. You can't pass it. You can't go through the road. So he's like, what are you going to do? He said, I'll, I'll, I'll try to, you know, push the sheep to the side and I'll try to make... Let's say there are so many sheep you can't, that you can't even push them. You're going to be in the middle of them. Who can tell me the answer? How can you pass that road? Three go chocolates around. for this one. Yes. Go around. Do you stay patient? Uh, but if you're, if you're, you're going to be stuck if you're there, patient. If there's no way to go around. There's, there's walls. Like there's only sheep, there's walls. There's no way to go around. Honestly, <laughs> there's, there's hundreds of them. You can't kill them all, okay? Hold on, hold on. Yes, take it. But that's the only way. That's the straight way. There's no other, there's no other alternative. I want, I want to hear a parent. You can't. There's the sheep. They're blocking you. You can't. There's so many of them. Yes. Don't go at all. <laughs> yeah. Don't go at all? That's not a solution. You have rules behind you. Oh. Oh. Hold on. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. yes. Go under them or over them? Go under them? <laughs> 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 hey, you can't go over them. You can't fly. They're like, they're big. Yes. Take a stick. Take a stick? There are hundreds of them. Okay, I'll give you a hint. You guys ready for the hint? Right next door, the house, there is a man who owns these sheep. Oh my gosh. Okay, one parent. Can I hear one parent? You, you can say it in Bangla, no problem. I'm not going to look right. Understood. Okay, I want to hear you. Yes. Uh, ask that man to um, move the sheep. MashaAllah, cats, three of them. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> How old are you? Nine. Nine? What's your name? Amir. Amir? Yeah. 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 Amir? Amir, nine year old, mashallah, he got the solution. You know what you need to do? Go up, knock on the door, say, hey dude, you're the sheep is blocking the way. Just let them move them away so I can cross. So, when shaitan comes and blocks your way, who do you go to? Allah. Allah, exactly. You go to the owner who created you, who created this life, who created this test. Does it make sense? Because a lot of time you're like, ah, oh, this music, you know, I'm gonna try. If you cannot stop the addiction to music, to pornography, to alcohol, to anything, if you don't go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for help. Does it make sense? So, and inshallah, um, I'll tell you something else about uh, some love and affection. A lot, of the, a lot of the kids, they're hungry for, for love and affection from their parents. And even sometimes, even I feel it with my own dad as well. With my mom, I, 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 it's so easy for me to go and hug my mom and say, Mom, I, I, you know what, I, uh, she, she's not very highly educated, right? When I tell her I love you, she says I love you too, but you know, you're funny, and, and I love it. And she knows because this is, this is what she learned, this is not what she's, she's not used to that. But with my dad, it's a little bit more difficult. Seriously, it's my dad. I'm telling you, it's a little bit more difficult. I, I don't remember. I, I, I've said I've, I've never said to my dad, "Dad, I love you." Like it's not. We don't have that. But I go and hug him. You know, I shake his hand. You know, when I, I, I get out from Brooklyn, I actually go and give him another hug and say salam. So this level of affection, if it's not there, it's going to be very difficult. When was the last time you actually hug your little kid 
and you said, how are you doing? Is, is everything okay? And there was a story of a, a non-Muslim, like the kid, he was a troublemaker. He was always getting detention, he was always getting called, like, like he was a troublemaker. And, 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 and the kid, and one day the, the parent like, heard this, and then the parent went, the dad went, and just hugged the kid, said, son, I love you. Just whatever happens, come to me, and, and, and we can talk. And, and the kid started crying. And the kid just, he just kept on crying. The, the dad's, he, the thing, the shirt became wet. He said, Dad, all this time, where were you? I mean, I was doing all this thing, but I, I wish you, to, you came and you grabbed my hand and you took me away. Why didn't you take me away? Why so late? And Alhamdulillah, that kid, he was still young. For a lot of the kids, they, they, they go to a state where it's too late. And I'll tell you, one of my very close, you know, circle of people, Subhanallah, uh, just, uh, just yesterday, he came back from prison. <coughs> he went to prison for a while for, for shoplifting, for stealing a car. And he was into drugs as well. And he, he, his recitation, the brother, Subhanallah, the brother recited beautifully. His recitation was the equal, beautiful Quran recitation. He even knows quotations of hadith and he impresses me. So don't think just because your kids, you know, they, they, they go, you know, like, you know, they have a beard and, and they, they give you salam when they enter the house. Don't think everything is done. I know in FDR, I used to go to Franklin Delano Roosevelt High School, and in the train station, this is what I saw with my own eyes. The, the girl, she would be in niqab. You know what niqab is? Yeah. Only you can see the eyes. And as soon as she got up the train station, this is like 10 minutes walk from the train station to the school. She would take, take the whole thing off, put it in the book bag, and walk. And she would have like, you know, you could actually see her, you know, bellies, and then like, she would dress like, you know, any other girl. And at the end of the day, she would walk again. Right before she got onto the, onto the train, she would put on the niqab. Do you think her parents knew? No. no. Remember talking about secrets? And, and we all have them. We all have them. Even the parents, you guys, I'm telling you, we all have secrets that we don't want our family members to know. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows. So we should... Um, be very careful, and my last uh, word before I open it up for a question and answer is that one of the uh, teachers was asked this question, and one of the parents asked him, what should I teach my kids? He said two things, right away. Number one, he said, don't teach your kids anything else, just these two things. Number one, teach your kids how to love Allah, number one. Number two, teach him the biography of the Prophet wasallam. Like that's it, don't worry about anything else. When he's growing up, like don't push him for prayer, don't push him for hijab, like don't worry about anything else. Because if you teach him how to love Allah, if you teach her the life of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he grows up, he will be a proud Muslim. When he prays, you don't have to push him. He will pray on his own because he loves Allah. When she puts on that hijab the first time, she will feel proud because she knows the life of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But what a lot of the parents, we do the other thing, like we, like for example, you know, before he was, I was asking one of the brothers here, like, should I, when I come, come here, should I wear my kufi or not? I asked him, he said, okay, because I went to some of the mission for khutbah, and I didn't wear a cap. You know what happened at the end of the khutbah? The first question, he came to me, he's like, well, how come you don't wear a kufi? So I said, well, did you understand the khutbah? Did you like, and he said, I, I, loved, it, I loved everything, but I just didn't like it. Is that the priority? Does that make sense? So I'm not, I'm not saying it's okay for the brothers who are, I, I have seen brothers, and mashallah, they go to colleges and they have kufi all the time. Alhamdulillah. But this is the message is that you could be a great American and you could be a great Muslim at the same time. What do the parents want? As parents, we want our kids to have prestige and money. You don't have to sacrifice your Islam for prestige and money. You can have prestige and money and you can have prayer and modesty at the same time. You don't have to sacrifice one for the other. So if you want your kids to grow up as good American, you can also help them grow up as good Muslim, inshallah. Okay. All right, so inshallah, I will open it up for questions and answers. Um, if you have any questions, just raise your hand, inshallah, and I'll do my best to answer them if I have the answer. And on the sister side, if there is any question, feel free to ask me. Ready? No question? All right, then. No question, then I'll tell you guys another joke. So it's about a speaker. He came the first day, he was invited, and um, the speaker got up on the stage, and he said, um, do you guys know what I'm talking, what I'm gonna talk about? 
He asked all men. And the audience is like, no. And it's like, the, the speaker left. So you know, if you don't know what I'm going to talk about, like, you know, I don't feel like it. So he just left. <laughs> so they invited me next time. But this time they're like, hmm, okay. They, he, asked him, he, he asked the question again, do you know what I'm going to talk about? So because they said last time he left, because they said no. So this time he said yes. <laughs> and he's like, if you already know what I'm talking about, then I don't want to repeat myself. So, he left. <laughs> so they invited him again a third time. But this time they're like, okay, we got to be really smart. Because if you say yes, he's going to leave. If you say no, he's going to leave. So when he asked the question, do you guys know what I'm talking about? So half of the room said yes, I didn't have said no. And he's like, those of you who know what I'm going to talk about, tell those who don't know. <laughs> yes, Okay. যেটা <laughs> অসুবিধা <laughs> ইমামের <laughs> And they don't even know how to slug, they don't even know how to make wudu. And they don't even know how to, make, how to actually pray. They don't even know how to take a shower. Do you know that the, the kids, when they reach the age of puberty, at a certain stage, they're going to have one dream. They don't know what to do. And nobody taught them. A lot of the girls, they, 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 they reach their menses, their period, they feel shy. I mean, they can't really ask them, their moms and their mom, they, don't, they can't explain properly. So these are the things that they need to know. And, and we should help them, inshallah, um, with those things. Okay. Is hookah haram? Uh, yes. Uh, hookah is sometimes, they say, it's, it's worse than smoking. Because when you, when you use hookah, what do you do? You actually breathe in so much of that, it's worse than like, you know, like a smoke. So hookah is the same thing. It doesn't matter if it's a flavored hookah. You have like a, nowadays you have like peppermint and this and that. You have different flavors. But it's the same thing. Same, same place. You go, you go to a Moroccan hookah bar or whatever hookah bar. What kind of people hang around there? You see the same thing, you know, so, so people, we, this is something that you should stay away from, inshallah. If everything we do is haram, what do we possibly do for fun? Did I say everything we do is haram? No. Did I say that? No. Where on earth, which, I, I don't know, there may be other imams. Did you hear another imam saying, you know, having a ping pong table in the masjid? And I'm telling you, those of, us, those of you here who are imam or who are in the masjid, you know, board, I'm telling this message, this message is for you. Have activities that are fun. I'll give you some suggestions. We did eat in Van Corden Park, you know, in outside. Have eat in the park. Get balloons and chocolates and candies for the kids. We had hina, you know, for the sisters. Face painting for the kids. And we actually gave balloon away. And we have ropes. Even the, you know, like the, like, you know, the, the, the adults, like, you know, they, they came and they, they actually pulled, you know, the, the what do you call it? Tug of war, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's so many other activities. Make the day of Eid the funnest, the, the most fun day of the entire year. And then every week, make Friday the most fun day. So for sisters, if you are cooking a special dish, biryani or whatever it is that you're cooking, save it for Friday. So the kids, they'll look, they'll, Friday is a special day, excellent, the food day. And those of you who go to the masjid or Juan, go to the masjid wearing the best dress, like the best dress you have. And then put on, you know, for, for the men. 
make this day your weekly Eid, which actually is. A lot of people don't know that. Friday is actually a weekly Eid. And then on that day, take kids to the park. Like whatever fun activities you want to do, make Friday the most special day. Is that clear? So that's one. Secondly, for the sports and fun, whenever you guys you know, plan sports, inshallah, basketball, go and have, have fun. For the kids, for the sisters, sisters, if they're you know, in their own place, there's nobody, there's no other men, you guys can do whatever you want. You can learn karate. You can learn how to sing. You can actually you know, play ping pong. You can do whatever you want. Seriously, like because majority of the fun things in life, they are halal. Only a few things that are Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said no to. I'm going to ask you the question in English, but for the benefit sure. of everybody, can you answer it? Oh, okay. Sorry, no so what about the um, elders in the masjid that are taking over the um, masjid, you know, and don't let the kids have any fun in the masjid because they think it's strictly for the worship. What do you have to say about Very that? Very good. Jodi ekon mojide mani borra mojide kete chalche ebong onra mone kore je ki mojide shudhu namaz porar jonno mojide ar kono kichu kora jabe na so should i answer that one yeah yeah okay allah rasuler masjid ta ki mone koren je duniyar shobcheye best masjid apnar yeah allah rasuler shomoy oi mojide ki hote janen allah rasul mone namaz poraten quran shikhaten okhane bibhinno jagate guest ashle o guest der ki ye korten juddher age mani juddher preparation korte okhane मुसल्लाइए मसल्ला पसंद कर ভালো একজন ইউথ যে নামাজ পড়ে যে ভালো ইংলিশে মোটামুটি ভালো আছে ভালো ইউ নো ক্যারেক্টার ভালো আসলা তাকে দায়িত্ব দিবেন যে কি তুমি ইউথের অ্যাক্টিভিটি টেক কেয়ার করো বা কি প্ল্যান করবে মাসে কোন দিন কোনটা প্ল্যান আমাদেরকে জানাও ইউ নো আগে ভাগে অ্যাডভার্টাইজ করার জন্য খাওয়া দাওয়ার ব্যাপারে হেল্প করেন ওদেরকে পিজ্জা আমরা ইউজুয়ালি ইউথের জন্য যা ইউজ করা করি আমরা পিজ্জা আনি এন্ড দে আর হ্যাপি এটা হচ্ছে নাম্বার 1 দ্বিতীয় সাজেশন হচ্ছে কি ইউথদেরকে নামাজ পড়ার জন্য ডাকে ফজর এদেরকে নিয়ে যান এর সাথে নিয়ে যান মানে নামাজ একসাথে নামাজ পড়া মানে বলি না যে এটা শুধু নামাজটা আপনার জন্য ফরজ না শুধু কিন্তু কেন বলছেন সো এই 10 বছর হলো কিন্তু ওদেরকে নামাজ পড়ার জন্য প্র্যাকটিস করাতে হবে ইনশাআল্লাহ সো আপনার আস্তে আস্তে এটা কিন্তু একসাথে হবে না বাট আস্তে আস্তে ইনশাআল্লাহ তবে ভালো ইউথ যারা মনে করেন 20 25 30 ভালো একটা জব আছে যারা মানে ভালো রেসপন্সিবল এদেরকে নিয়ে আসে দেখবেন যে কি মসজিদের অনেক উন্নতি হবে আমরা ওখানে একটা ই করতেছি উইন্টার কোট ব্রা করতেছি আমরা এই যে জ্যাকেট এবং কোট কালেক্ট করতেছি আমরা কাজের জন্য প্রচুর ছেলেবেলার আছে ঠান্ডার জন্য সকালবেলা বাসে কিনে ওয়েট করে না সোরাস করে যায় না কেন কারণ ওদের জ্যাকেট নাই গরম জ্যাকেট নাই আব্বা আমরা ওরা দেয়ার পর গদরি ধরা এখন কি টাকা দিয়ে খাওয়া কিনবে নাকি জ্যাকেট কিনবে সো এরকম কিছু অ্যাক্টিভিটি করেন যেগুলো আসলে সাধারণ লোকদের সাধারণ জনগণের জন্য সাহায্য করবে দেখবেন যে কি মসজিদে শুধু মুসলমানরা আসবে না অমুসলমানরাও আসবে সাহায্যের জন্য এবং ওরা এসে জিজ্ঞেস করবে তোমরা কি প্ল্যান করতেছো অলরেডি স্যার সো ফ্যামিলা সো মেনি থিংস সো এই মসজিদটাকে চার্চ এবং সিনাগগ এবং টেম্পল এগুলো চাইতে ভালো যদি আপনি বানাতে চান এই মসজিদের একটা কমিউনিটি সেন্টার করতে হবে এবং খুব বেস্ট কমিউনিটি সেন্টার হচ্ছে কি ইয়ুথ সেন্টার মানে যেখানে ইয়ুথরা আসলে ওয়েলকাম ওদের জন্য আলাদা জায়গা আছে আমি জানি অনেক মসজিদ ছোট জায়গা নেই তারপরে চেষ্টা করেন ইনশাআল্লাহ সো এটা কি অনেকটা সিমিলার এটা মনে করেন জামাতের শেষে যখন সবা ইন্ডিভিজুয়াল দাঁড়িয়ে আপনার সুন্নত আদায় করতে তখন যদি সামনে লোকে নামাজটা শেষ হয়ে যায় বা সামনে দিয়ে মনে করেন আমি দাঁড়িয়ে সুন্দর করতে চাই আমার সামনে দিয়ে কি ক্রস করতে পারবে আপনি সামনে দিয়ে ইমিডিয়েট সামনে ক্রস করা ঠিক না কেউ যদি সামনে ক্রস করতে চায় নামাজ পড়তেছেন আপনি হাত দিয়ে তাকে সব করতে পারেন 
what would happen if you're in the bathroom and then it rings on and then it starts reciting? So that's a, that's, it, it's a good thought, but uh, you know, in terms of practice, it, it might be very bad because you should not be reciting Quran or mentioning Allah's name in the bathroom. Because I heard some people saying no, you are not supposed to put surah as a ringtone. I've seen a lot of people, they, they have like, um, Allahu Akbar is a ringtone, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, or some Islamic machine. So you can have something good, something positive, and there's nothing wrong, nothing wrong with that. But don't put a, an eye of the Quran because you might, you know, you might be using the restroom and things like that. If everything we do is, okay, I've already mentioned this. What is the halal way for a guy to approach a girl? A okay, very good question. What is the halal way for a guy to approach a girl? Number one, if a guy is, um, um, is it? like he has he has feelings for the for the girl, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala will not punish you for that sin for that for that for that feeling. Does it make sense? So if you have a crush on a girl or a girl who has a crush on a guy, there's nothing wrong with that. What's wrong is that you start chatting and communicating with each other without the parents or somebody else's knowledge. So if you are in, let's say you're end of your high school or you're in college or you're graduating, like you are mature enough, you're ready to marry, to get married, the first thing I would do is, obviously, you know, hopefully she is single, propose, go directly to her parents, you know, to, to her friends or whoever, so find out her parents, and I would suggest this for everybody. This is something, inshallah, I'm going to mention in my um, uh, workshop. I'll be doing very, very soon. Uh, it's called a marriage resume. I'm going to talk about this biodata. Right? Biodata, right? You know, you know what they put in the biodata? Noun, date of birth, height, and address, phone number. Abanna, Amanna, Ayanna, Onna, Kikare, Uncle, Auntie, Grandfather, Grandmother. Seriously, like, I, I mean, I mean, Dr. Din, I've asked a lot of people, no benefit. Seriously, like, how will I know? I, they, they are not, some of them are there in Bangladesh, or most of them are in Bangladesh. So that's number one, this is, this is not very useful. It's okay, put your mother's name and father's name, no problem. But then put two sections. About me, you're going to mention about me and say, I am so and so, I'm studying this, I'm planning to work as, as this. Right now I'm involved in this masjid. I, 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 this is my hobby, this is some of the sports I like to play. And inshallah in the future I would like to live in New York, wherever you, you, you say your future plans. And then you say about her. Inshallah I'm looking for someone who, you know, who prays five times a day, who has a hijab, you know, who, who is at maybe from this age to this age, uh, maybe who speaks silati, like you know, whatever, whatever you have. So, and then, then you share that, with someone from her family. It could be her brother, it could be her father, it could be somebody, one of the adults, inshallah. And if you mail it, if you have email communication, always CC somebody, one of the adults, inshallah. And this is how you should uh, propose to a girl if you like someone, inshallah. Does that answer the question? Okay, good. You people just made, there's no, there's no question here. <laughs> yes. About on YouTube, the disrespecting our Prophet What do you think we as Muslims react to that? Very good. The, the video that, that, that came out about the Prophet, right? I've talked about it a lot. The number one solution is if you love the Prophet, act like him, be like him. So, you know, the best solution, the best response you can have get a biography, get a seerah, like the Prophet, and start reading about it. How are you going to defend the Prophet if you don't know his life? Okay? So if you go burn a flag or you kill an ambassador, how does that help anyone? And the Prophet said not to touch the hair of the ambassador, even if you are at war with the country. So this is something, this is foolish. A lot of people, they do, they, they, they burn cars and things like that. This is completely silly. This is dumb. You know, uh, that we are very, we're emotionally so high, but we're intellectually very low as Muslims. So the best response to this, is to learn the biography of the Prophet Teach in your youth group, you know, in your, in, your, in your programs. In family, as parents, you should have a book to your little kids before they go to sleep. Bedtime stories. Read a story from the life of the Prophet inshallah. What do we do if we're in love and we want to marry our boyfriend? What should we tell our parents and can please explain in Bangla for our parents to hear? Alright, I will do so inshallah. The first question is, what do we do if we are in love and we want to marry our boyfriend? The best solution, if you are in love, is to get married, if they are the right person for you. 
But I'll give you the cautionary note. Sometimes the people that we fall in love with may not be the best person for us. Trust me, you're not looking for Mr. Perfect. For girls, you're looking for Mr. Right. And for guys, you're not looking for Mrs. Perfect. You're not gonna um, um, put any actress's name like some some su supermodel in hijab. Like, that's not, you want a Mrs. Right. You want a Mrs. Right, somebody who's going to be right for you. So the first thing I would do, find out if that person, ask yourself, if you are in love with someone, is that person right for me? Do I see myself as a future husband? Do, would, she, would she be a good mother for the kids? And if the answer is yes, take it to the proposal level, as I said, you know, go to the proper channel, inshallah. But don't be doing it in secret. Don't do it in secret. Trust me, you will, be, you will destroy it before it even begins. Because there are parents, you know, there, there are parents who would, let, who would actually accommodate. So from the beginning, inshallah, start the dialogue and tell your parents, and, and inshallah, this will be easy for you if you take the proper route. Okay? And, oh, Bangladesh. কেউ যদি কোন ছেলে ছেলে বা মেয়ে তারা যদি একজন আরেকজনকে বেশি পছন্দ করে এবং তারা যদি একজন আরেকজনের জন্য ভালো ফিট হয় দেন তাদের তাদের বিয়ে দেওয়াটাই দেওয়াটাই উচিত কিন্তু প্রশ্ন জিজ্ঞাসা করতে হবে আগে তারা একজন আরেকজন জন্য ঠিক আছে তারা যদি একজন আরেকজনের জন্য ভালো মিল না হয় তাহলে কিন্তু ভবিষ্যতে সমস্যা হবে আপনারা জানেন যে কি বর্তমানে আমেরিকাতে মুসলমানদের ডিভোর্স রেট কি জানেন আমরা what if you say, oh my god, that's fine, oh my god is, a, is an expression in this country, but you know, if you say, if you, if you say something bad, like I'll give you an example, like you know, a lot of people, they substitute, but they say shoot, or you know, something like that, they don't want to say sugar honey iced tea, so they say the other word, right? Okay. So if you're substituting it, it's, it's okay, but see if you can substitute it completely. You say, you know, it's a subhanAllah, alhamdulillah, or something bad, and say, inna lillah, it's, it's a good habit. But as long as you don't say, you know, Jesus Christ or all Christ, as long as you don't say something, something like that, then, then that should be fine. Can you explain the meaning of Bowie's like amulets? And can you say it in Bengali for the benefit? Okay, uh, about Tawis. Tawis or amulets. You guys know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you know Harry Potter, like, you, you guys know what I'm talking about. Amulets. <laughs> so Tawis, I'll also let the name Tawis. You have the kid, but it's cheerful that Tawis got a ticket. But you have to keep it. 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 जदुपर उल्टे क्षमता स्वागतमें He would actually make them feel welcome. We call them yes, Shabab. Oh, youngsters, 
something like that, like you know, like out uh, outside of marriage. They are married, but they are not happy. So after each time, after each time, after each time, they go through, they go through. So you know, some people consider it very difficult. So our our solution is that it it depends. After after each time, it's a cap, it's a goal, take it. Shika, select the goal. Dhaka the goal. China the goal doesn't matter. Doesn't matter as long as long as they sound like you know maybe if you are gonna marry somebody, tell them okay, I'm gonna learn your language or I'm gonna learn Chinese, and the girl will say okay, I'm gonna learn Arabic, whatever the case is. So inshallah, you have to take that extra step. But it is it, there are a lot of challenges, but it is possible. And this in America, subhanallah, it's happening everywhere now. It's happening everywhere because when the kids ask your kids, I'm gonna pass the kids because you're not going to school today. Or okay, other kids Bangladesh will put it there. What's your name? Ifat. Ifat. What's your name? They know him as Ifat and Sakib. They don't know him as Bengali. That person. Well, that's what he's That's it. One in Chinese, Spanish, American. Shop, keep your hands here. What did Puri Jinot say? Ki, Nam di. Because Shop is common language. It's English. So you have to remember, parent, bro. If you, mani, open, our mind, 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 mind. But that mani, even as a, keep your eyes open. Actually, my brother, you have to be good to try. Shop is a, ha, bolbe, ma, na, bolbe. Ha, bolbe, na, na, bolbe, na. Find out for it. They can keep your mind. Actually, my, inshallah, that will be successful to learn. Can a Muslim male and a Muslim female be friends? Well, regardless of being Muslim, can a man and a woman be just friends? No. Okay, I, those of you youngsters, I give you a homework. On YouTube, there's a video, type it up. Say, can a man and a woman be just friends? And there's a guy, like a non-Muslim guy, he went up to the university and asked. You know, all the women, they said yes. And all the men, they're like, no. <laughs> <laughs> because man, you know, you know what I'm talking about, right? Like, you, how can you, how can you be a friend with a with woman? Just friends, come on. It, it's not, it's not natural. It doesn't make sense. So, just friends, the idea that is false. You can't be just friends with the opposite gender. Please comment on recitation of the Holy Quran without trying to know about its meaning. Um, comment on recitation. Of, okay, so. If somebody just recites the Quran without knowing its meaning, then that person is not doing the the, the proper thing. And actually, let's say Apni Apni Kulwala wa Hajjan, Inna Apni Kalkatul Jannah, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alamin. This is third surah Jannah. Apni Kuno surah Jannah. Kintu a third surah jab Apni Oth Kota Jannah. Jokuni Apni Namaz Purven. Apni Alushur Kotha Bhutis. Apni Iman Bhagi. Apni Moza Bhagi. Aramde Orika Khabar Jaa Sena. Gula Quran Shri Moza Bhagi Sena. किधो किचु जान मनी बिरी थे की जान ना और अगर हम कुरान पढ़े वो क्या आश्चर्य हम दोस्ती के लिए करते से जो कुछ भी जाने मिली के तरह चश्मा करें आप बात करें कि मिली शिकार चश्मा करने शाला आई थिंक आई आंसर दिस वन मोर ओके आई डोंट नो द प्रॉपर स्टार्टिंग ओके व्हाट इज़ द प्रॉपर ट्रांसलेशन ओके आई � Yes. Alright, inshallah. Okay, quickly. Last one. Last one. Uh, I just want to know what are the hygiene techniques about the hygiene of Islam? And what are the most important things about the hygiene of Islam? Hygiene. Okay, cleanliness is very important in Islam. Hygiene. Um, I'm going to talk to you about the hygiene. Oju. Sorry. Pressure pack and water. How about the drink or drink? ठीक है सर जब आप आउटडोर टॉयलेट टॉयलेट में जाएं मेक शुरू टेक क्लीन हो मैंने बहुत सारे बनाने शामिल हैं जो भी बेसिक मलाई था के यू कैन सी नो बेसिकली व्हाट डू वी कॉल इट स्क्वाट डाउन लाइक यू कैन स्क्वाट डाउन सो दैट बेसिकली पेशाब वेर जो यार आज जब आपने काई आपने काई बाप आपने पुश्तक be be a good looking you know person inshallah take care of yourself groom yourself and so we don't have the time to go into the detail but this is something extremely important not just for prayer but as a good muslim you should be good smelling and good looking by good looking what do i mean whatever allah gave you the shape of your nose the shape of your cheek you can't change that but can you take care of your hair can you take care of your beard and can you take care of your clothing yes so whatever you have the ability to take care of take care of inshallah and um, uh, okay, inshallah, they have more things to do, so I will go. But I'll be here, inshallah, if you have any more questions. SubhanAllah, so, alhamdulillah, inshallah. <laughs> तो अमादेर ये जे एक्चुअली आउटस्पीकिंग इंग्लिश 
So uh, all these problems that you saw, the statistics, I know a lot of people came uh, late, so you couldn't get to see the statistics that we, we conducted a survey basically, and uh, we conducted more than 100 surveys of Bengali youths, and we randomly selected 100 of them, and we showed the results. Um, we talked about, we showed how many kids are involved in, uh, in drugs in school, how many are in relationship, how many are in, uh, uh, having sex be, uh, before marriage and stuff like that. And also, we, uh, we, we try to see how much Islamic knowledge they have. And very briefly, I'll give you a, a few of the statistics before, because um, I, I don't want you guys to miss. So I think 59% uh, of the sisters don't know who Prophet Musa is. And these shocking numbers are very shocking. 82% of the of the youth, all of the youth said they, they keep a secret from their parents, generally. And um, so, uh, inshallah, if you want to see the statistics, uh, um, you can contact us, and we'll, we'll, um, we'll, we'll love to share with you guys. So, um, obviously, we have a problem in our community. Do we all agree with this? Uh, yes. Yeah, okay. So, inshallah, you know, um, Brother Sharif mentioned a lot of give us gave us a lot of very good suggestions in our what we can do in our masjid. But are they happening in our masjid? No. Be honest, guys. No. So, and I, I'm very much, subhanAllah, thank you. I'm going to know about the question goes in Iman, they're kind of the exam. These questions are very serious. Kids are in trouble because parents don't know how to deal with the kids. And then our community, our masajids aren't, aren't providing any of these kind of educational, um, Islamic educational uh, knowledge in the masajids or outside of masajids. So, uh, we, so a couple of my friends I, and I try to do something with our community, especially with the youth. I don't know. I know it's it's very hard to do with you know in the masjid because um, some people were doing something they got kicked out. And, uh, inshallah, we're not going to say names, but so we, uh, some couple of the brothers in in the community um, is also working with us, uh, helping us financially and giving us facilities. We're actually in a house in Burlington Avenue and we're conducting a, a weekly halakas. And we formed a group called the Ashraq Youth. Uh, the meaning of the uh, Ashraq means uh, to shine. So our youths are, inshallah, all these youths are doing phenomenal jobs. That Inshallah, you will hear them one by one in a few seconds. Um, so the, well, the Ashraq Youth is our, uh, we have one mission and three visions, inshallah. So I'd like to share with you uh, the mission. Our mission is only, only this. Um, I say it again, reiterate all the time. Our mission is to only attain the pleasure of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala by worshiping Him the way He's He's supposed to be worshipped, the way He deserves to be worshipped. And our vision is to focus on three things: Islamic knowledge, especially the knowledge, Islamic knowledge, dealing with our with our youth and and the community. Uh, in our current situation in America, we don't want to, brother said, we, the, when we go to the masjid, we hear uh, the stories of Islam. How are these benefiting us? We need to know how to pray. We need to know uh, probably how to pray. We need to know the meaning of the Quran. So inshallah, our, our Islamic events are going to uh, tackle these um, topics inshallah. So first topic inshallah, uh, one of the brothers will say what we're doing in, uh, in a couple of days. And then we're also um, focusing on quality education and career. I know a lot of the organizations are already doing it. And then, so, uh, so if, I know we said we are trying to unite the community and work together. So if you want to, inshallah, help us in, the, in, in this section or any of these sections, you want to combine anything, we'd love to love to do, do it together, inshallah. Let's not pull each other's leg anymore. Let's not. Let's not bring back the history, what happened in a couple of days in, in the past. And the last thing, we also want to do some, um, we want to help our community. Uh, we, we, we're, we're also uh, collecting quotes in the uh, month of uh, uh, December to help out some of the homeless shelters in the locality. Also some of the, uh, if we have enough, we can, we're trying to reach out to other organizations in it to find out a way to send them to Bangladesh. And, uh, Palestine and countries like that. So inshallah for um, 
Right now, I'd like to invite Limon. Uh, he's going to speak about our um, upcoming summit events. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Shakoko Alon. Uh, my friends know me as Limon, and my school friends know me as Shaq. The the Ash uh, uh, Ashraq Youth has benefited me in many ways. As the ways it has benefited me is providing me with great friends, good company, righteous Muslims, will help me also in my deen and my school. Another way it helped me was I got two brothers here who are almost finishing college. So if I need, and, and I'm going into college, so if I need help about SATs or college applications, essays, etc., I go to them for help. And another way it helped me is a place that I go for refuge. Since, I, since all my former friends left me, because they went to tech, but how you call it? And now I just got you know, cool Bengali friends, so I go to one of my brothers, now he, his house, and I meet up with my brother over there. We play ping pong. Me and my close friend, Sadi, many of you might know him. We used to wrestle. We just had, we just had a blast. And inshallah, more fun to come. Our next event, inshallah, in December, is going to be called What It Means to Be a Muslim the day-to-day -day life of a Muslim, the beliefs of a Muslim, and how a Muslim acts um, and he behaves in society, like the character and the image of a Muslim. Yes. And inshallah, we got future events coming up, and some of them are, who is our master, the last and final messenger sent to mankind, the reality of the hereafter, and many more inshallah coming up. And jazakallah khayra. Inshallah, brother Shubo will talk about our um, social, social activities. Assalamu alaikum wa My name is Shubo, and I will be speaking on behalf of our social activity committee. The Ashraq youth has benefited me in many ways, not only educationally, but showing me what it truly means to be a Muslim. It has opened my eyes to the many problems we as a community have been facing. It has moved me to do something, to do something instead of watching the, the problems prosper. And inshallah, there will be a bowling event for everyone on November 24th, 3 o'clock p.m. Following that event, there will be a Ithikaf sleepover party at New Year's Eve. If you don't have a place to go, on New Year's Eve, join our Shakir for tons of halal fun. And alhamdulillah, there will be a co drive throughout the month of December. We would like you to give us your old coats so we can donate it to homeless shelters. We are not only focused on the Muslim community, but on our own America. Thank you. Can you stand up as well? So what they're sharing, it's amazing, right? So you guys should congratulate them. I'm gonna teach you a new way. Ready? So everybody's gonna say one, two, three. Show your fingers to them and say you rock. We have more. You. Have more. Okay. One, two, three. You, you rock. rock. Good job. Uh, we have some more. Um, <laughs> next is Brother Salwar. That's going to be talking about the educational events. Oh, each. Oh. Mike. 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 My name is Salwar, and I'm in charge of the educational events along with Brother Salwar. I'm here today to talk about how the Ashraq youth. I'm here today to um, talk about how the Ashraq youth have been beneficial to me. First and foremost, the Ashraq youth have taught me many things that I've never have learned anywhere else. It opened up my mind to so many different levels that I can't even explain. Most of the youth here today may think may think that we just sit there and listen to morning lectures, but in reality, it's more interactive and everyone partakes in every movie. Why do we need to pray? Why do we need to read the Quran? Why do we need to go to Muslim? These are all familiar questions to youth, to youth, are they not? The Ashraq youth will not only provide the answers to these questions, but will make you want to pray, will make you want to read the Quran, and will make you want to go to Muslim. Next, I would like to talk about the Ashraq youth's educational journey. How many of you guys are in high school or college? The Ashraq youth can help you with the SATs, college applications, and the whole college experience itself. They will try to help you achieve your educational goals. Personally, I would like to become a doctor. How many of you want to become doctors? Many of your parents may answer for you, yes. But not all of you might agree with that. 
Some of you might want to become a graphic designer, a photographer, a lawyer, or even a law enforcer. The Ashraf Youth can help you approach your parents about such things, and inshallah make your dreams into a reality. Alhamdulillah, there will be an educational event on the 8th of December called the next four years. Thank you a lot, All right, one more time. One, two, three, you rock! <laughs> Assalamualaikum. Uh, my name is Muhammad Rahman, but people know me as Nadi. And uh, I'm going to be honest about this whole thing. I'm not going to sugarcoat it or anything. Before the Ashok Youth, I actually hated coming to these events. They were boring to me. No one my age would come and be like a bunch of Bengali people saying words I never heard before. But, and the only reason I'd go is because I was forced to attend. But ever since that should be started, I actually enjoy going to the youth meeting, uh, the youth meetings every Saturday, and I actually like going to these events because I have my friends and other people with me. Um, actually, I look forward to these events, and it's really fun. Actually, it's not boring. It's not uh, like you don't go to sleep like I used to do before. <laughs> um, I, uh, a few months ago, it was just this was just an idea. I showed you an idea. Now we're about 20 members deep, and inshallah we'll grow. Inshallah. 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 Um, we have fun with our friends, but still learn about Islam. And the last thing I'd like to say is that uh, us, the members of Ashok, we organize all this. It's no adults. We have adults, but like, they're like babysitters, <laughs> <laughs> we, have, we have a president, we have a, um, like a head, yeah, vice president, a head of everything else. But we organize everything, we organize our events, we tell people to come, we, um, we make the flyers and stuff, uh, to people that make flyers. And then, one thing is, this is our our youth, our organization, and our community. Prophet Muhammad said, appreciate five things, appreciate five things, your youth before your age, your health before your illness, and your wealth, if, your wealth before your poverty, your spare time before your hard work, and your life before your death. So we need to, for the youth out there, we need to make our youth count. We can't just sit around and play backups all day like most of us do, honestly. So we need to make sure that our, we, our youth actually count, that when we grow old, we can tell our, grand, we can tell our grandkids and our kids that we make this community, we help build this community. So also, um, uh, your health before your illness. A lot, of, a lot of us might get sick, diabetes. You know, us from Bengali is sugar. <laughs> diabetes, cholesterol, that's, a <laughs> that's completely normal for guys. I mean, obviously, most of you have it. <laughs> so, uh, most of you guys don't, but if you have it, it's nothing, it's, you know, it's not a big deal. And uh, your spare time before your hard work. We're all going to get old, we have to start, and we have to start getting, um, getting jobs. So before we start getting jobs and starting get, and getting really busy, this help build this community better uh, to brotherhood and sisterhood. That's go to the sisters too. Um, uh, inshallah, we'll see you at our next meeting. Uh, how many of you are interested actually going to our next meeting? Where is it? Uh, yeah, so how many youth are interested? Yeah, what's the location? Uh, 125 Burlington Avenue. Uh, my uncle will he'll explain that later on. So, uh, inshallah, I'll see you at our next meeting. And, so, like, you rock. You rock. You rock. Okay, we have another youth. Uh, he's going to try to speak in Bangla for us. Uh, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Amar naam Rausha Tudini. Ami ek Asha ki yute eche ekan shudusho. Ami ekan ni bolte chahi ki Asha ki yute amak ki kiba be saad jukarche. শুরুতে আশাকে যোগদানের পূর্বে আমি স্বাভাবিকভাবে ভিডিও গেম খেলতাম কম্পিউটার ব্যবহার করতাম বা টিভি দেখতাম অবসর সময়ে আমি এত উন্নয়নমূলক কাজ কিছুই করতাম না এখন আশাকে যুদ্ধে যোগদানের যোগদান করে আমি কোরআন শরীফ পড়ছি হাদিস শিখছি রীতিমতো নামাজ পড়ছি বন্ধুদের সাথে নামাজ করছি সবসময়ভাবে অথচ গেম খেলাধুলাই করছি আমরা এখানে শিখছি কেন আমরা কোরআন শরীফ শিখব আমরা <laughs> <laughs>
uh, and also we're going to have the college event um, the four, next four years of your life, inshallah, it's going to be combined with the system. Uh, place is still TBD. It's going to be announced very soon. Uh, follow us on Facebook. Uh, if you go to www.facebook.com slash the ashram, you will you'll see all our events, coming upcoming events there. If you have any questions, please email us. As of right now, we have a Gmail account, but inshallah, we're working on the website. It's going to be up uh, soon. So the email address is the ashram at gmail.com. The ashram. Exactly how you spell it, youth at gmail.com. So a um, lot of the kids are coming, and uh, parents, we heard that parents aren't letting their kids come into our, um, our organization because uh, they're in you know, this false ideology. So we want to uh, hear from some of the parents that, um, that kids are coming and how the parents feel like the kids are doing. So I would like to um, invite Noshab's father, um, to come say a few words. No, it's your father?
So we are, how much did we, how much do we have so far? Two hundred dollars? So we need thirteen hundred dollars more, inshallah. <laughs> I just want to say thank you to everyone who was a part of this event for making it successful. Alhamdulillah, we had a great turnout, and may Allah make what we heard and saw today a benefit for all of us. And may inshallah, may we all uh, make the change that we need for our community. I just want to make one last, uh, recognize one last person who really helped us big time. Uh, our brother and our beloved Imam Sharif, praise Allah, he came all the way from the Bronx to help us with this project. He gave us suggestions on how to make this event turned out to be a great event that it was alhamdulillah and he took out time from his busy schedule to come and talk to us and share with us some beneficial knowledge on how to improve our community so i know we were able to get him a little gift so inshallah he can come up and accept this gift from us where? 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 He's from Bawa. <laughs> you know, you know, subhanAllah, I, this, is, this is what happens. When we open up, we let other people in, they do amazing things, inshallah. So like, uh, you know, when they, these guys are together, you don't know who is Arab, who is Bengali, like, they, they all, you know, they all talk the same language, they all act the same. So I want to thank you guys for being here, and for the parents, those of you who came, don't let this be the last time you come. Okay? All the future events that they have said, send your kids inshallah and tell others uh, whenever there is a program. You should be the first one to tell them to come inshallah. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you guys. You guys are awesome inshallah. So can I have a one, two, three, you rock for this guy? One more time, let's go. One, one two, two, three, you rock. <laughs> Alright, Jazakallah guys for coming out tonight. Now you guys are all free to see Jazakallah. <laughs> Thank you.